Hello everybody, welcome to Sewing Report Live. I'm your host, Jen. We're gonna have sort of a chill Sunday stream. To be honest, there's not a ton going on. I found a couple things to talk about, but if you have questions or if there's something you would like to bring up, now is the chance for everyone participating in the chat or if you're watching on the replay, let me know what's on your mind. What's going on? Are there any sewing related or industry stories you would like to talk about? Let me know. This is sort of a viewer participation type program. So welcome if this is your first time here. I'm coming at you from a sewing room in Florida and we are gonna have some fun. We're gonna, we're gonna chat. We are going to read the comments. So if you're kind of new here, this is what we do. This is sort of a hangout stream, but I also, if there's something going on, I bring up different sewing related or crafting industry stories or any sort of community stuff. And I take breaks to read the chat. If you're watching on the replay, of course, you're welcome to leave comments. The only thing I ask is that if you are participating in the chat, uh, subscribers only can participate. This has been something I've done for quite a while. And I ask that you be respectful, polite, nice to each other and no politics here. That's the only thing I ask. So welcome and also no self-promotion type stuff. So we are gonna be, be having some fun. So let me know where you're watching from and what's going on this weekend. Are you working on a fun sewing, quilting, craft project? What is happening in your neck of the woods? Also, let me turn the music down just a little bit. But welcome, welcome. We're gonna let some people come in. We are multi-streaming as well on multiple platforms. And I'm also, I'm gonna be trying to experiment with a new uh, streaming platform so that could be interesting too so i may do that during the week i may do a like midweek type stream so before we get started though we have to thank tonight's live stream sponsor as usual the sewing report etsy shop your stop for fabric all curate everything in here is curated by me and it's all i'm an authorized uh, retailer I have fabric, I've got sewing supplies, and I also sell some select handmade items as well. So if you haven't been there yet, check it out. Got some great, great deals in here and uh, free shipping over $35. I do ship within the United States. And new to the shop, I have these really cute Sarah Hearts premium labels. These are awesome and I'm really excited to use them myself. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing we have is the Refresh Fat Quarter Bundle by Figo Fabrics. I have four of these left. It's a great price. It's $34 for 14 fat quarters. So you get three and a half yards of fabric. It works out to less than, uh, ten, a little bit less than $10 per yard, which is actually pretty good because fabric keeps getting more and more expensive. And if you add just one more thing to your cart, you can get free shipping on that as well. So yeah, that welcome everyone. Let me know what's going on here. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me check. I feel like something's going s screwy with the comments. Let me check. I'm not sure if I can see the comments. Well, all right, let's see what's going on here. All right. All right, no, I think we're okay, okay. Anyways, yeah, le if you guys wanna leave me a comment just to make sure that I can, nothing's going wrong here. All right, I think we're I think we're okay, hopefully. But welcome everyone, and yeah. So the Sewing Report Etsy shop is tonight's live stream sponsor, and I will also. What else is going on? I do have some. We do have some new things going on, in the uh, the product space. We'll be talking about that. Um, as far as Joann's, I know everyone really likes the Joann's uh, updates. Not a ton going on. I did find a couple articles we could talk about. Also, let me turn the music off here. All right, I think we're good on the music for now. But welcome, everyone. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah, if you guys can't, if you're watching right now, drop a comment in the chat just to make, just to let me know, because I'm not sure if they're, I'm wondering if we're having some issues. I'm not 100% sure. So if you guys can do that. Um, also, I do have some pinned comments, a link to the Etsy shop, and a link to uh, one of our affiliate partners, Sew Tights Magnets, which I do have my my lovely stand here with my own Sew Tights. This is not sponsored. I am a Sew Tights affiliate, and uh, they did send me this really cool 
hang stand to display all of your sew tights. So I've got this going on here. All right, let me, I'm trying not to, I get a lot of glare off this light here, so that's always fun. But I have a lot of sew tights myself, and this is a good way to store them. This is available, and I do not sell this myself. I sell some of these sew tights magnets, but if you would like to order this really cute aqua colored hang stand, you can get this at sewtights.com and use coupon code sewing report for 15% off of your order. You can also purchase things like the magnetic cutting system. And I'll also be talking about a new product that Sew Tights is put out because I think it's pretty, pretty cool. So let me know what you guys are doing. What is up with everyone? I know we are starting at kind of an earlier time. I'm hoping this can be more of a permanent thing. We might be starting around, thinking we could start around 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. Let me know if that is a good time for you. Okay, so let's talk about the last time we talked about what was going on with Joann's, uh, one of our viewers, Jamie, had mentioned that she had placed an order and her order was just outright canceled. She didn't know why. She, I think she tried to place two orders maybe and they were just canceled. So y'all left, I uploaded that clip to the channel here and y'all left me a lot of really interesting comments about what's going on at your local stores and what's going on with the online orders. Uh, Jamie's not the only one who's had issues with the ordering system at Joann's. Apparently a lot of other people have had problems as well. Either like they would do the order online pick up and store and that was not working out well. Obviously because it does seem like a lot of the Joann's locations are a bit short staffed. I've also read a lot of comments that people have tried to place online orders to ship to their home. And the orders were either canceled or they did not get all of the items and they were having some trouble getting refunded on the items that they did not get. So there's a lot going on with that. It does seem like it's a bit problematic. So if you've tried to order from Joann's lately, let me know what your experience has been because that's kind of, kind of crazy. So that's always fun. All right, so... I found a couple articles about Joann's and I want to talk about those. They are, now we know that jo the Joann's stock is currently, it's a little bit higher than it's been. It's now 56 cents. So in the last couple months, it's been in the, the like the, the four, like 45 cents, something like that. So they're up to 56 cents. And then the, I saw this article on, I don't know how legit this website is. It's called SeekingAlpha.com. They are citing a Bloomberg report. Bloomberg is a bit more of a reputable uh, media outlet. But the thing is, uh, a lot of these articles are paywalled. So it's kind of hard to find, an ar find articles about business stuff that isn't behind a paywall. And I'm not, I'm going to be real. I'm not paying for this stuff. I'm definitely not. I don't want to pay for Bloomberg. So um, let's take a look at this article from Seeking Alpha. So it says it's claiming that Joann's uh, is having talks with lenders in attempts to boost, boost cash reserves. So this article says a cash infusion from lenders may help the company avoid a potential bankruptcy filing. According to a Bloomberg report on Wednesday, which cited people familiar with the matter, talks are ongoing and terms of a deal haven't been completed. A representative for Joanne didn't respond to Bloomberg requests for comment. Uh, Joanne shares plunged 35% on December 5th, that was last year, after the Crafts retailer reported Q3 sales that missed estimates and a wider than expected adjusted loss. Joanne's stock has plummeted 83% over the past year. Ugh. Joanne's talks with lenders come after some other retailers have also been struggling. Uh, Bloomberg reported last week that Big Lots is looking for new financing as it tries to deal with dwindling liquidity and Children's Place, I didn't even realize that uh, brand was still around, is working with advisors to obtain new financing. The Wall Street Journal reported on Monday that apparel retailer Express is preparing for a debt restructuring. Wow, Children's Place and Express, like those stores were around in like the late 90s. I didn't realize those were still a thing, but apparently, apparently they are. So that is the latest with Joann's. Yeah, I tried to check out this Bloomberg article, but like you, you can only read like the first couple lines and, you know, sorry, Bloomberg, but I'm not going to pay. I'm just not, I'm not paying for 
to read Bloomberg. Sorry. I don't, you know, I'm not going to pay for any of that stuff. So it says, just says, Crafts Retail Joyan seeks cash boost as liquidity wears thin. Lenders are holding confidential discussions with the firm. Company's term loan due 2028 uh, trades around mid single digits. Yeah, that's, that's probably not good. So I guess they're trying to get more money and they're, tr you know, it seems like they've been having problems with credit. So that's not a, not definitely not a good sign at all. And currently, let's check out the stock price. The stock price is now at uh, 56 cents. And I know they've been threatened to be delisted off of the NASDAQ. So that's also also not great for uh, Joann's. Um, I did see some. I do lurk on the subreddit r slash Joann. I have seen some chit chat among some of the employees about executives visiting the stores. Again, not confirmed. This is just, you know, employee alleged chit chat. Uh, but it does seem like corporate is a little bit, you know, they, they got some they got some fires to put out. That's for sure. Uh, so that is the latest uh, with Joann's. But kind of crazy there, isn't it? All right. All right, and guys, if you are watching, if you're watching right now, could you leave a leave a chat because I feel like something technical is going on and I'm not getting the chats. So if you're watching right now and you could leave a chat, uh, just leave some sort of comment. That would be awesome just because I feel like I feel like something's going wrong with that because usually I have a lot of comments and I have none besides mine. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's normal. So I'm trying to figure out, let me refresh it on my, I've got YouTube pulled up as well. Because we have 23 YouTube viewers and normally we have some activity in the chat. So this is kind of, oh wait, you know what? Oh, I see what's going on. I set the chat at members only. Okay, that's what's going on. Okay, let me see if I can fix this. All right, let me, let me fix this. I think that's what's happening here. Sorry about that. I thought it was strange. Okay, I meant to set it on subscribers. Sorry, guys. Okay, I was like, that is really weird. Okay. You should be, if you guys want to refresh your screen, if you're watching on YouTube. Okay, I do have a rumble comment. So thank you, Steph LF. Okay, sorry, guys. I did not mean to set it on members. I don't want you guys to pay to be able to chat. All right, that's my fault. Okay, I was wondering what was going on. Okay, so if you're watching right now, and you want to re... Okay, there we go. Okay. I was like, this is weird because normally I we don't get no comments on YouTube. Okay, so here we go. All right. All right, we're good now. I was wondering, it just seemed very odd to me that there were no chats. Okay, so I fixed that. Sorry, guys. I That was my mistake. So when you are setting up your live stream, you can select a participant mode. So anyone, subscribers, members, and live commentary so like you can pick to pick approved users sorry guys i had it set at members and uh not yeah pay so that's paid members instead of uh subscribers so sorry about that okay here we go i was like what's going on this is very weird okay yeah it's that's my bad all right all right so we are all right we should be good now all right yes here we go yeah i was like what's going on hey technical stuff right all right, thank you, everyone. I thought it was really odd. I was like, we don't normally have no people in the chat. And we have viewers, so I thought that was very uh, strange. Okay, okay, got it. I just sent you a mess. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we, we should be good now. All right, yeah, if it's on members. Yeah, I did not mean to set it on members. I'm not, and I know some, I've seen some bigger live streamers do that, and it pisses people off because basically it's like you have to pay to chat. And I do think that's kind of like, I don't know, like at my level, that definitely is kind of a douchey thing to do. Okay, uh, J Jules D, Joanne canceled my order Friday night. What the heck? What the heck? Okay, so we, we took it off members only. So now you only have to be a subscriber. So if you, um, which I feel like is a, I feel like that's not too much to ask. You know, like if you are going to be part of this community, you know, I don't want just randos here or people who are like here to troll. So I, that's why I have it set on subscribers. So at least the people here have some skin in the game and they're not just here to like cause, like cause problems and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So at least if you have to be a subscriber, 
that's gonna, I feel like that's gonna eliminate a lot of the problem people if it's subscribers only. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, so News print magazine ceased this month, went sort of digital, but it just seems to be selling. Oh, so it's one of those things where if you go there now, it's just like advertisements and stuff. All right, let's look this up. That's a good tip. Okay, let's see here. So News magazine. Is it SoDaily.com? Okay, yeah, this looks like it's, uh, all right. Yeah, I can see. All right. Oh, now and now they've got like a subscription. They're going the subscription route. Okay. I'm personally, I, I never really had some so news or anything, but kind of interesting. It seems like a lot of these publications are, yeah, going digital only and then everything's a subscription. All right. Wow. All right. Here's the old magazine. Yeah. Digital printed, printed at $13.99. Wow. That's, that's kind of pricey. Digital edition, $10, $10, like, maybe it's just me. All right, that seems a little pricey for what it is. Like, I get that, you know, I get that these things cost money, but if you're going digital only, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like that price is going to be a bit, yeah, I feel like that price is going to be a little off-putting to people. I don't know. I do miss print ma I really liked print magazines. I kind of wish those would, more of those would come back. Okay, wow. Some of these old editions are like 15 bucks. That's really exp Maybe it's just me. That's kind of expensive. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's an interesting tip there. So, so Sewing News is now digital only. Wow. Oh, okay. This is a good... All right. Aldi has a $39.99 sewing machine that looks interesting. Ooh, you know, I should go to Aldi's. All right, let's check out. You know, by the way, Aldi's is one of my, I do really like. I haven't been there in a while, but I love Aldi. I think Aldi is a, a fantastic store. And not just for groceries. It's a good store for, like, all this random stuff. You can get, I've gotten air mattresses at Aldi's, um, I bought, we bought blenders at Aldi's. I've got, I, I have an iron from Aldi. So Aldi has a lot of, they kind of rotate out a lot of their special deals. And they have a lot of really great stuff. That's a good idea. Let me check this out. All right, let's see the Aldi. Uh, should I buy the Aldi sewing machine? I could go there this week. Oh, these are some cute stuff. Okay, let's see what else is. All right, let's see if I can find it. I don't see it on this week's thing. Maybe it's on upcoming. By the way, how is everybody's Valentine's Day? Did everyone have a great a great uh, V Day? Okay. Ooh, this is cool. All right. Some of this stuff, I feel like the rabbit. By the way, the rabbit's kind of taking a nap. What kind of wood is this? I feel like my bunny would like this uh, wood knot thing. Or I'll show you. Let's see. Let me try to switch it to this tab. I feel like my bunny would really like this. Yeah, they've got some... All these has, like, all this good stuff. They've got lots of home decor stuff. They've got, like, household items. They sell clothes. They sell all kinds of stuff. All right, let's see if the uh, sewing machine is... Yeah, some of this stuff looks... Look at this baking dish for $9. That's not bad. Some of this stuff is really cute, actually. All right, I don't see the sewing machine on there. Maybe it was from the last week, um, the last week's thing. I should go and check out to see what they, I, I, I do need to go back to Aldi. I haven't been there in a while. That is pretty crazy. They got, is it St. Patrick's Day already? Apparently so. You just go from one holiday to the next. Like, they kind of all blur together. Yeah, some of this stuff is, like, really super cute. Like, these glass these glass bowls with the lids. You get 12 of them? Oh, you get six. Okay, with the lids. That's still not bad for $14.99. So, I mean, this is some pretty good, pretty good stuff here. Yeah, I kind of want to go to Aldi now. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm, I've seen sewing machines there before. I personally didn't go for it because they look it did look sort of the sewing machines I saw there were a little bit chintzy looking 
you know, I don't know. And I don't know. Sometimes you wonder if it's, you wonder if it's worth it. All right. Uh, Joanne has had to give me so many freebies because they missed, messed up 90% of my orders. That's, wow. Okay, that's not good. I mean, at least they tried to make it right, I guess. I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, okay, about the soy news. Yeah, that's the thing. I I understand that some things make sense as a subscription, but the thing I don't like is that companies are trying to make everything a subscription, and that drives me crazy. Um, I've decided here I am never, I'm not going to promote anything subscription-based um, myself, and I, yeah, I'm not going to promote anything that's a su subscription, and I'm just not, I'm so over it. I just don't want to. I don't, I just don't like the way that's going. So news digital is the, yeah, it's the cost. Like you might, I don't know. I kind of would rather have the paper version. I don't know. Yeah, $15 seems a lot. That seems like a lot of money. I don't know for that. Artspira updated their terms and app. It made users verify that they're 18. That's interesting. So that, is it a problem that people under like 13 and up aren't using it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Aldi's has great stuff. They've got great um, home stuff. They've got seasonal stuff. Awesome food. I think the only thing that can be a little hit or miss there is like the produce can be a little, some, a little bit, yeah, not always amazing, but that's not bad. All right, Denise G, my godmother sent us a handmade Valentine's Day card, and now I want to try making cards. So, um, oh, you know what? Let me, I want to get something real quick. Um, my mom, my mom has been into card making and she's getting pretty good. Here, I'll put up the, I'll put up the Etsy shop for a second and I will, I'll go get, I want to go get the cards my mom made. That actually would be kind of cool to talk about. But yeah, card making, she does, I forgot which company, I think she does like stamp it up or one of those companies like that. So my mom lives in this 55 plus retirement community in Florida and uh, they've got, it's basically like, it kind of seems like summer camp for seniors. Because she always has something going on. She's got a dance class. She hangs out with her friends. She takes all these classes. They go on, they go to restaurants and stuff. So my mom has gotten into card making since she moved there. So I'll put this up for a second and let me, let me get her cards because they are super cute. All right, let me put this up. I'll be right back. Ow. Okay, sorry guys. I just hit my knee on the computer. Okay. All right, so I got to show you this because it's kind of awesome. So my mom is has become a pretty good card maker. All right, here we go. Let me show you. So these are some cards she's been sending me and my husband, and they're super cute. So this is the one she sent us for Valentine's Day. Isn't in she uses some stuff that's like pre-made and then she does a lot of it herself. Like, I feel like this paper probably was already printed. So, and then, and, and then I actually ended up giving her a bunch of my, like, I don't know if you've seen, I, I tried to get into scrapbooking and paper crafting on the sewing report and guys, I just couldn't stick with it. So I bought, I have like a, you know, the Cricut, whatever, which by, I'm not a fan, not really a fan of that brand anymore. But I got a um, Sizzix Big Shot and I ended up giving that to her. And I gave her a bunch of dyes and paper and stuff. So I gave her the big the big Sizzix that I used in a video. And then I gave her all of my like scrapbooking stuff. So here's some of the cards she made. So I just want to brag on this for a little. Isn't this sweet? So she, she made, and here's like the back. So it does seem like she kind of uses a mix of like pre-printed stuff. And then she does some of her own stuff. Like, I don't think she wrote out happy. I think this was like a, like a kit. 
So she does some kits and then she also does some stuff herself. Isn't this cute? So this is the Valentine's Day card. I just thought it was so cool. And she made a little, I, th I don't know if this is like a little tag or bookmark. I guess this could be a bookmark. Isn't this cute? All right, she made us this card. And this has like some, like spring. So she used some spring things. So it's like a three, kind of a three dimensional card. So these are like little springs in between the dogs and then the card. And she's got little, what are these like terrier? What are, are these Scottish, Scotty, Scottish terriers? So she did these. So I, th and I think this is a stamp. So she also has a bunch of stamps and stuff like that. I, oh, I also gave her some embossing. I gave her some embossing stuff that I bought. Because for a while I was buying those Sizzix um, boxes of the month or whatever. I never used them, so I just gave them to her. So she made this little card here. Isn't this cute? And then she made this one. I think this is a mix between pre-printed stuff and then like, um, she might have used some watercolor stuff and then some other things. Um, but yeah, isn't this adorable? So here's the back. So yeah, she's getting pretty good, and she doesn't even have a Cricut. Actually, I should probably lend her mine. We did go to Ikea um, one day, and we got her a little desk so she can do her card making easier. So this is one of the cards she made. Isn't she? My mom is, like, super crafty. I told my mom she should have a YouTube channel, but she doesn't want to. And I, I was trying to get her to come on the sewing report. She doesn't want to. She definitely doesn't want to do it because she's not. She's not really into being on camera, but she's. Like, she's really good at doing this stuff. Like, she's very good at crafts. My mom has, like, the neatest handwriting you've ever seen here. This is my mom's handwriting. Isn't this, like, super neat? Like, it's such neat handwriting. All right, and this was her, I think this is a Thanksgiving card. Yeah. Isn't this adorable? So she... She used some, like, uh, sequins here and then some real ribbon. So she kind of mixes between using stamps, stuff that's already printed, and then little embellishments. So those are some of the cards that my mom has made us. I think there's, she's really good. Honestly, she could have a paper crafting YouTube channel. And I think even if she didn't want to be on camera, I think she would be pretty good if it was just, like, an overhead camera and she was just doing it like, you know, you just showed her hands. Um, I feel like she could get a pretty good following, honestly, if she wanted to do YouTube stuff. I, she really doesn't want to, but I think it'd be really fun and it would be cool. But I don't think, I don't think she's going to do it. So those are some of my mom's, uh, my mom's card making endeavors. I save all the cards. She also made really cute, um, Christmas tags. I gotta find, I gotta find ours. Um, but she made us like something similar like this, but it was a, like a Christmas theme thing. Um, but yeah, I was glad I gave her like all the scrap. I, ga I gave her like Tombow brush pens. I gave her all this stuff that I bought for like channel stuff and then I never ended up using it. So she's very good. She's honestly really good at it. Um, all right, let's see some of the con. Yeah, you're right. This is true. Not all Aldi's carries the same products. That's true. They do tend to be like, they vary from store to store. Yeah, some of the Aldi stuff is super awesome. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the store. I think it's really, I think it's a great, especially with groceries getting more expensive, I think it's a great store. Uh, they've got great values, and I feel like the prices are fair. Uh, I used to subscribe to a lot of quilting magazines and have let them go, just wasn't reading them, and they take up space. That is true. Uh, I guess uh, digital storage is easier than storing, like, physical physical magazines. And you then you don't really want to get into, like, a hoarder situation either. Um, and have like floor to ceiling stacks of stuff. I feel like I'm getting close to that. So I need to try to cycle some stuff out and like try to unload some things. So that's why I was glad to give my mom a lot of that paper crafting stuff because I was like, she would actually use it, you know? And, I, and, and that's the thing. I'm like, when I did that con you consult with the YouTube guy, he was like, yeah, just stick to the sewing stuff. And I had been trying to do like too many different types of videos and not really dialing it enough so that's why I, that's another reason why I gave my mom all the scrapbooking stuff was because I you know I I didn't really want to keep doing that stuff for the channel because it wasn't it was too all over the place so now my mom is 
using all of the Sizzix stuff and all the paper and stuff. It was some cute stuff, um, some of it. You know, I just didn't have time for it all. And I kind of bought, like, I definitely kind of bought a bunch of that stuff without really thinking about it, and that was definitely a mistake. All right, I wanted to learn how to do card making with my Cricut machine. I've only made one. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those things where you want to do it, but then the reality of it, you're like, you never end up getting around to it. And then you're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to... Yeah, now I have all this card making stuff and I haven't made any cards. Like, that's where I was getting. So at least since my mom was actually doing the card stuff, you know, it made sense to give her a bunch of stuff. And then she didn't have to buy it. You know, she just got... She just got it, and then, so, uh, yeah, my mom has been, she's been really going to town with the card stuff. Like, I mean, look at all this. Isn't this, I, I love the little dogs here, though. These are so cute. I'm just, I don't know. Oh, and she, she look, it says, like, handmade, or let me, okay, she, she has, like, a little stamp on the back. That's super cute, though. Yeah, my mom has, like, the neatest handwriting. Like, my mom has the neatest handwriting I think I've ever seen. So yeah, that's my mom. I, I was trying to get her to come on the channel with me, but she really did not want to. So I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, have you used the Smart Iron by Oliso? I was actually thinking about ordering the Tula Pink edition, but I was really on the fence about it. Now I can buy it wholesale. So I was like, maybe, maybe I should. But then I was like, like... Even, like, I think it retails for, like, $250, and I was like, I don't even know if that's something, I don't know if I really even want a $250 iron, if I'm being honest with you. Like, I just don't, like, what can I do with an, like, I know it's got the little feet on it, so it stands, you know, it won't scorch, but, like, how often am I walking away from the iron? Not very often, so... I think it looks cool. I've seen the reviews on the Olisos are very... Like, they're not, there aren't enough positive reviews. I keep seeing a lot of reviews that aren't great. So that's why I personally have not, I don't, I've never owned an Oliso iron. Uh, they've never really reached out to me either or anything like that. So I don't really think I would, so I thought about getting one to review, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to do it. So I, I don't know. They also have a little one that's a little bit cheaper but even that one was like, I think wholesale, it was still like $79 or something, which I already have plenty of irons. Um, so I'm not really sure. I'm just not really sure I would need, I wouldn't even need it. It's cute. I like the colors on it. And I like, you know, I like the Tula Pink stuff, but I wasn't sure if I really wanted to, to do that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Aren't they, aren't they good? Like I was like, they're so like nice. I want to keep, like, that's why I keep all of them. Because uh, my mom made them, and they're really, like, they're very nice, you know. So, yeah, those are cards cards my mom made. Okay, so why don't you like Cricut anymore? So, uh, they tried to pull the subscription thing, too, similar to what Brother did a few years ago. Um, so, I did a few videos back on, like, the main channel um, where Cricut, and again, this is why, again, Overall, I like, I like Brother. I didn't like what they tried to do with the Brother Skitch and the Art Spira app. Um, Cricut did something similar where a few years ago, they tried to limit the amount of uploads. Like, you could upload external files into the Cricut design space uh, software. So here's the thing I don't like about the Cricut. I, I think for my next machine like that, I would actually get a silhouette. Because Silhouette software is standalone, which I did purchase the Silhouette software. I just don't have a Silhouette. I know that's weird. Uh, but Silhouette doesn't make it... Silhouette software is not cloud-based, and it's not subscription-based. So you buy it once, and that's it. So the business one is like $99 or something. So I actually did purchase it to play around with it. I have not used it yet, though. But Cricut is really trying to get people... one. You can't, it's the same thing as the Brother Skitch. You can't use Cricut machines without internet access. You can't use the um, software without internet access, which is stupid. Um, and apparently in the past, Cricut has actually bricked machines. 
So I had, I actually donated this. I had a, uh, an OG Cricut Expression, like from 2009. Those are the ones that ran on the cartridges. I decided to donate it just because it was taking up too much space in the house and everything like that. Uh, but I don't, I really disagree with Cricut's business model where they're trying to make everything cloud-based. You know they're selling your data. Like, we all know that's happening, which I'm sure Brother and all these other sewing machine companies are going to do the same thing. But I was really turned off to the way that Cricut um, handled that whole situation. If you haven't seen those videos, they're like kind of old. If you search for Cricut Sewing Report, you'll find the videos. Um, but Cricut tried to limit the uploads to like 20 per month, which is like nothing, to try to get people to pay for... Uh, the premium version of Cricut Design Space. Uh, so that really turned me off. And it also, like, the way... The company was clearly very unhappy with me doing any sort of reporting on this whole debacle. And I got a bunch of, like, snarky emails, like, from the company. Like, oh, are you going to be up, you know, reporting this? Up? Like, they were very weird. And I also heard from some other people that were our former Cricut influencers about the way... Uh, Cricket conducts itself from a business standpoint, and that really soured me on the brand. Um, so I know that was like a few years ago, but I still to this day, like I just, you know, I, I don't even like owning the Cricket products. Like I really wish I could kind of just start over and just get other stuff. Um, so that's why I'm not really a fan of Cricket. I will not promote Cricket on the chan any of the channels. Um, you know, I don't know. I do have a Cricut, um, the Cricut, like, what is it, the Cricut Maker? I have a Cricut Maker. Um, I haven't used it in a while, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I would actually be more interested in trying the Silhouette just because I, they haven't pulled that nonsense on everybody yet. So, I see that quilted postcards are pop. That's interesting. I've not heard of that. All right, I'll have to look that up. All right, she needs to sign her cards in the back. That's a good idea. So she did put the, like, oh, wait. Wait, funny you should say that. Okay, here we go. Let's check this out. All right, she did sign this one. Here, let's. Her, her name is Kathy. All right, she definitely did sign this one on the back. That's funny. Let's do, yeah, let's see the backs of some of the others. Okay, she didn't sign this one. She She signed some of them. Okay. She had this little stamp on the back of one. And guys, let me tell you, my mom is like, my mom is kind of a neat freak. I'm kind of the opposite. Like, it's not like I'm a disaster or anything, but I'm not nearly as, like, neat as she is. Um, so, you know when you go to the grocery store and you get plastic bags? She will fold every one like it's like factory folded like every like random plastic bags she like instead you know how most of us we just kind of like crumble it up and like stick it in another bag my mom will take the time to take these bags and like flatten them out and she will like fold them up but like it looks neater than when it than when it like came straight out of the factory i'm not i'm not joking um so that's kind of funny. And then she'll fold them up all nice, and then she, like, has a special spot for them. It's pretty funny. Um, also, like, she keeps her things. She takes extremely good care of everything she owns. Um, when I was a kid, my dad and I, my mom loves the movie uh, Lady and the Tramp. And she loves Lady, you know, the dog from Lady and the Tramp. So my dad and I, for, like, Mother's Day or something... We went to the Disney store and got her, like, a really cool stuffed lady from Lady and the Tramp. My mom still has it to this day. It's, like, 20, probably, like, 30 years later. And it still looks pretty new. Like, it looks straight. It looks exactly like the day we got it from the store. And, like, it's, it was actually pretty, like, this was back when toys were higher quality. Like, it's not, like, a real squishy plush. It's, like... Like, it stands up on its own. It's, like, very, it's, like, a very, um, not stiff, but, like, it's, it's a very, like, you know, yeah, it, it's more, like, it almost looks more, like, taxidermy. Do you know what I'm saying? So, she still has it in her craft room, and it's, the dot lady still looks totally new. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. 
All right, let's look at some comments here. Maybe a short pre... I don't think she would do it. Like, she doesn't want it. She really doesn't... She doesn't even really understand this. So, like, I don't think... She's seen some of the videos, but she... I don't think she really wants to... I don't think she really wants to be on the internet. So, I don't think she'll... Yeah, I don't think she will do that. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Yeah, exactly. Like, it... She wouldn't even have to be on camera. If it was just like an overhead shot of her just making the cards, I think people would watch it. And she could probably make some money with the channel, like just like Kathy's cards or something. I don't know. I tried to talk her in. And I tried to talk her into doing um, a video with her where we set up her craft area. And she didn't really, she didn't really seem that into that either. So I don't know. Yeah. I know I would watch a lot of people. Like she's very good with the cards. So I think, yeah, just an overhead camera, no face to show. Like, it could be a faceless channel. And just her in, like, real time making the cards. I feel like that could be pretty, I feel like that could do pretty well. Oh, thank you. All right, let's see here. My local library fills the void of hoard sewing related. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, so instead of spending money, you can just get a library card, go down there and read all the sewing stuff. And then you can leave it there. That's a good point. Okay, we need another uh, sewing tutorial. Vinyl material and zippers. Okay, I do have some vinyl that I could work with. That's, all right, vinyl material and zippers. Okay, good suggestion. I do have um, one tutorial. I, did, I think I made some pouches with vinyl. Um, I haven't sewn with vinyl in a while. I do have, I, I've been doing some embroidery with it. So that's a good suggestion though, thank you. All right, I had an Aliso a couple years ago. The foot lift sound is really annoying, and it started spitting brown spots after you. Yes, that's what I've been reading, and that's what concerns me about, so like, this thing is really expensive. Let me look up the price. Like, it's really not a cheap iron. I would also be kind of afraid of using it because, you know, I would just be afraid of using it because it's, like, so expensive. Yeah, so check this out. It's so if you go to Fat Quarter Shop, I mean, yeah, it's it's two hundred and nineteen dollars two nine two hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. That's very that's for the Tula Pink edition. The regular edition is like I think about two hundred dollars. I mean, it looks cool. I do really like. I you know I'll be honest. I really like the design of this. That's what made me. That's what kind of made me want to get it. I love the design and the colors. I think it's super cute. And I love the please, yeah, the please don't feed the fish on it was kind of the thing where I was like, yeah. But yeah, I've seen a lot of reviews about the Olisos. I mean, should I get one to test it out? I don't know. I would just be so, I would be so nervous to use it because it's a pricey iron. I don't know. I I don't know. Let me know in the in the chat. Should I get an Oliso iron to try it out? I can get one wholesale, but it's even at wholesale prices, it's still kind of expensive to buy. So I don't know. I would like to yeah, the small Oliso looked pretty cool. Uh, I would like to try the small Oliso. It doesn't take water and the mini iron I have gets so hot. Yeah, I they have a smaller one and that one looks really cute too. Let me, let me see the small one. Let's see here. But yeah, I don't know. I just, um, like, I the reviews on it are just not good. Like, they're not that good. Like, some of it, like, I've just seen so many problems with the irons that I'm like, you know, I don't know. It's like, is it worth the money? I mean, the iron I have is from Aldi, and it was like $13. Oh, Terry, thank you. Okay, so many people, so few likes, guys. All right, thank you. If you are here and if you're enjoying yourself, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. That would be appreciated. Thank you, Terry. Do you have an opinion on the Brothers Scanning Cut? I've never uh, owned it. Um, I don't know. I'm also, I'm not super excited about that one too because Brother is clearly trying to get everything to be cloud-based and subscription-based. So that's a negative, in my opinion, for the Brothers Scan and Cut, that they're trying to really, they're trying to really do that. 
All right, silhouette could change because cloud-based and subscription seems to be the wave of the future. That's true. Like, there's nothing to say that silhouette couldn't do that. But on the upside, at least if I bought a current generation of silhouette, I would probably be able to do it even if they changed, you know, just if I got another silhouette after that. Like, the cur at least the current models, you can run it without the internet. So that's why the silhouette, in my opinion, seems to be good for people who don't like that nonsense. Um, I think Cricket is very, like, the thing they've got going for it is definitely the marketing. And it's, like, very, like, beginner-friendly, like, app-based and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. All right. I, will, I cut vinyl and fabric with the Cricut Maker form of bags. See, I've tried to cut fabric with the Cricut Maker, and I wasn't a huge... I ha ended up having to use the rotary blade, and it didn't even do that great. Like, like, it would be faster just to cut the fabric out by hand. I just really didn't... Yeah, I, I didn't... I wasn't wild about the Cricut Maker for cutting fabric. Plus, it can only cut fabric up to, like, you know, it has to be in between, like, that 12 by 24 mat. You know, that's the biggest size. So, you know, and it's like, then you have to redo the fabric. You have to stick it down another mat. It just takes, I felt like it was like not very time. It was not very productive. So that's why I personally am not into, I, I wasn't into using the maker for cutting fabric. I can so relate to your mom, lol. <laughs> yeah, my mom is like, she, she, I've never known anyone else that folds the plastic bags that way. She's very clean. Definitely a niche considering that Hallmark cards are insanely expensive. Why are those cards? So, I mean, I can see why people make their own cards. Why are car greeting cards? Like the last time I was at the store, greeting cards are like $5 and up. I was like, that's a lot. And people just like throw it. They throw them out afterwards. So it's like, I don't know. Any pointers on how to cut faux fur? Is it a mess? It probably will be. Although I read, I saw a tip that if you're cutting faux fur, like, you know how there's, like, the nap? So, like, if, if the faux fur is, like, you need to, like, move it out of the way to, like, cut around it. So, like, if the faux fur is, like, going, laying this way and you have a cut here, lift up the faux fur. But, yeah, well, no matter what you do, certain fabrics are just going to shed. Minky is terrible. Minky is one of the worst. Minky is one of my least favorite fabrics because of how much fuzz it produces and just... It, it's also difficult to sew. Faux fur is pretty tough. All right. I like the auto lift feature. You should get one. Okay, about the Oliso. I'm th I'll think about it. Like, is that something you would watch uh, a, a review on the Oliso irons? If I, like, because I think to buy one wholesale, I think my price would be, um, like, it actually wouldn't be that cheap, much cheaper. It would be, like, I think it's, like, 160 plus for, I have to pay shipping for it. So buying an Oliso wouldn't be... Like, it's not like I would get it at half price. It would be, like, maybe 70 bucks cheaper, but then I have to pay for shipping, too. So, I don't know. We did talk about the Brother Fabric Printer. It seems like a disaster. Um, plus, the roll, you have to use the proprietary rolls of fabric, and it, each roll is $99. Um, so, yeah, that's why that, that one seems very gimmicky to me. I personally wouldn't buy it. It seems like a lot of money. And it's like, I don't need to print custom fabrics. That's not just not like a need I have. But if I did, I would probably just, you know, for the few occasions I do, I would probably just do like spoon flower. Or, like there are some custom printing companies that do fabric. I would probably do that instead of getting the printer. Also, you have to use their proprietary ink and stuff. So it's just a rat. It just seems like kind of a racket to me. Uh, do you have any Adobe subscriptions? Yeah, I do. That's the one, like, that's the one thing. I have a few subscriptions related to this YouTube channel. Like, this streaming platform is a, an annual subscription. Although, I'm trying to find, uh, I'm trying to find a free alternative. I did see one that looks promising that I'm probably going to be testing out soon. I do have an Adobe subscription. That's pretty, pr it's now, like, 60 bucks a month. But I use all of their products, so... You know, it's like kind of like a necessary evil. I'm held hostage. You know, it is what it is. Like, there's not much else I can do. All right, my Christmas card list has been cut way down. I think it's small enough. I might make Christmas cards over the summer so they're ready to go. Yeah. 
I'm going to be starting my Christmas sewing early this year, too. Right, what are your favorite fabrics? Um, hmm. Personally, anything that's... I like woven fabrics. Um, one of my favorite fabrics is actually a Rifle Paper Co. Rayon. I think the rayon is a really nice substrate. It's one of the easier ones to sew as far as rayon goes. Um, as far as... I like quilting cotton because it's pretty easy. I like the Figo Fabrics quilting cotton in particular. I do sell it myself. I actually really like the substrate. It's one of my, it's, I, that's actually one of my favorite quilting cottons. Also, Cloud9 fabrics are great too, and um, they try to be envir more environmentally friendly, and a lot of their fabric is organic. It is a little pricey, but it is really nice. Um, I also really like thicker cotton knits. I think for knit fabric, those tend to be a little bit easier. Um, I hate, I'm not a fan of sewing with polyester yeah, just not not a fan. Um, I also don't like thin knit, like the real thin knit fabric. That can be a nightmare too. Not fun. Not fun at all. All right, review the mini Olisa. Okay, so should I do the mini one or should I do the, like if I was going to do it, should I do the mini or the full size? I think that, let me see what I can get the full, like I'll check my, distributor or website here I forgot what the price was for okay I can actually buy the mini iron for like 60 bucks so I guess I could do that so it's expected and I could get it so I could do the mini one I think is this a steam one too I don't know I'm not sure if this one has steam or not I think it might I don't know. Okay, this one is a steam iron. So there's the mini one or the full size one. The full size one retails for about $220, which is pretty expensive. And guys, I will, I, I promise, I do need to open up my, unbox my Ditto sewing pattern projector. I just, it's such a big box. I've been like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. So I've been kind of dragging my feet on that video. All right, I think you cut faux fur on the back of the blade. Yeah, I've seen that too. Yeah, because the thing you don't want to do is cut through the nap. So, like, if the fur is hanging down, you don't want to do that. So, yeah, that seems like a good suggestion. Cut it on the back with the blade. All right, Lisa. Aliso irons are too pricey. Have a Panasonic iron for $39.99 in my Amazon cart. It doesn't have auto shut off. That's a good, yeah, I don't, I don't really like auto shut off on irons. Drives me nuts and my current iron is not hot every time I go to iron. I do have the Panasonic cordless 360 iron. It's not bad. Um, I think I paid like 80 or $90 for it. It's not a bad iron. I just don't know if it was necessary, but sometimes it's, so, it's good for some things. Okay, the mini Aliso actually seems bigger than a traditional mini iron. Yeah, I mean, I am curious about it. I've never owned an Oliso iron, period. Um, so I can get the Oliso mini iron for like 60 bucks. So I guess I could do that. Yeah, I don't know. And that is a steam iron. So I don't know, maybe that wouldn't be a bad, like that would be relatively easy to buy. You know, I will say the Tula Pink uh, Lift Pro Plus does look cool. I would just be afraid of buying it and then having it crap out on me. That's like the thing I don't really want. So that's where I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know. So my husband actually saw, um, so my husband and I, when I was first, we were first getting into sewing, we both watched Missouri Star Quilt Company tutorials. He thought the Oliso iron looked totally cool and he wanted, he was very like into it when he saw her using it. He was like, that looks so awesome. We still haven't bought, so I've never owned an Oliso iron ever. All right, I plan to get the regular size iron. That's awesome. All right, I prefer Rowenta irons. Yeah, the, the Rowenta seems, they seem to have a pretty good reputation. I've also heard good things about those Laura Star irons, but they're really expensive. So that's another one I'm probably not going to be buying. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. 
All right, I have the Elisa mini iron, and I don't like it because it is difficult to hold. Ooh, that's good to know. The handle is solid. Yeah, I don't know. I'm th I'll think about it. The Tula version could come out with a, come out of a craft room furniture budget. That's funny. Uh, Jen, where did you get your cutting mat? I got this one from Amazon. Um, let me see if I can, I'll find it. I'm not sure. I just got it from like a random seller. I got it because it was pink and I liked the pink. Let me see if I can find it and I'll link it. All right, I'm going to mute myself because I have to cough real quick. All right, the brand of the cutting mat is called U.S. Art Supply. I don't see it right now. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong size. Let me see if I can find it real quick. My has started leaking. Out. Okay, is there a, just a good, reliable iron brand out there that doesn't do any of that stuff? Because I'm like, it seems like they all have some hang-ups. And that's where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. I mean, my, I will say my Aldi iron has never really given me problems. So maybe that's, and my, uh, my iron was like, my iron was only like, thir literally it was $13. So, and it's been pretty okay. All right. All right, so I'm having trouble finding the size I have. I found the 24 by 36 inch mat. I have like the, I have the 24 by like 40, it's like 46 inches or something like that. But here we go. I'll link the, I'll link the cutting mat here. <clears throat> All right, let's see. All right, I'll put this in the comments here. And of course this is an affiliate link. You know, y'all know, y'all know the drill here. All right, I've had bad luck in using water with irons, so I just use a spray bottle with water. That's a good point. I actually do the same thing. I don't tend to use the steam function. I usually just keep a spritz bottle that I got from the dollar store, and then I just use an iron. So that's about it, really. Uh, what was the fabric name from Rifle Paper Co.? So it's just like rayon fabric, although I just noticed that Rifle Paper Co. stopped selling fabric on the website, which makes me really worried because I think the Rifle Paper Co. fabric is really great quality, and I hope they're not stopping production on it. That would really be a bummer. It's actually one of my favorite. Like, their rayon is so nice to sew with. It's not super slippery. It, you know, it doesn't, like, it's not frustrating to sew with. It's just really nice fabric. And I bought a bunch of it. They were having a sale or something. And I just really like it. But I noticed recently it just hasn't been on the website. So I'm like, are they just discontinuing it? I don't know. I Gravity-fed irons don't leak. The water isn't stored in the iron. And that's actually a good point. I was looking at those irons on, like, um... Wabox sewing they have gravity fed irons for like a hundred dollars or like a hundred and fifty dollars and those actually look kind of cool I was just trying to figure out where I would hang the water like it has like a water container and then it like feeds down I just didn't know where I was going to put that and sometimes it's kind of a space thing I don't like it's like that whole setup is so bulky that I wasn't sure if I could you know have a place for it. But they do, the gravity fed irons do look really nice. How do you keep the iron plate clean? Oh. Oh, I will show you, Terry. I will show you. Okay. This is called Easy Off. Here we go. And this is, I think I got this from Wawak Sewing. And I use this. And it really helps. It's like really cheap too. So I think it's on the Wawak website. It's like $3 a tube or something. Not sponsored. I just, I have like three tubes of this. It kind of look like it obviously looks like toothpaste or something. Um, 
you get like an old towel, put a little dab of this like on like you would put on your toothbrush and then iron over it with steam and then iron on a clean spot of the towel and it really helps remove gunk from your iron. It's super cool. It's called Easy Off. This stuff is amazing. Cannot recommend the Easy Off enough. And it's very, like the cheapest place I found it is on Wawak Sewing. Florida tap water will kill an iron ass. That is why I have, um, we have a water softener. So our water quality has improved immensely since my husband, who is a plumber, installed a water softener in our home. Um, but yeah, the Florida tap water here is pretty terrible. I will only drink filtered water. So now we have the water softener, plus I still have the water filter in the fridge, which is what I'm drinking now. But yeah, the Florida tap water is pretty brutal. Uh, but the water softener is amazing. My skin has been noticeably, like it's not perfect, but my skin has been a little bit better. And our fixtures, like the, all like the faucets and stuff, they've been getting a lot less like weird stuff on them. Um, so if you do live in an area with like very hard water, a water softener is a great investment. Gravity fed irons are the best. I'm really curious about it. I would love to, I would love to try one. I'm just not sure what I would do with that water. Like I was trying to figure out what I would do with that water um, tank. So that's where I'm like, yeah. What types of projects do you recommend the rayon for? Clothes, it's really nice for drapey outfits. Um, I've made purse scarves with rayon. You could also make, um, you know, other types of scarves. You could make like hair scrunchies. You can do, I probably wouldn't do like pants. So I wouldn't do like pants or something you're going to sit on. I feel like that could like snag the fabric or like, you know, make it wear down faster. But I think for tops or like even flowy dresses would be very nice. Um, what else have I used rayon for? But yeah, you could do, I think they would make really cute like hair, like the hair scrunchies with a little bow on them. I think those would be cute because you could do that with scrap fabric. Yeah, I've done purse scarves and stuff. Really, like it's just really nice fabric to work with. And it's not as frustrating as, like I've tr I tried sewing some stuff with polyester and oh my gosh, I was just like, this is, I was like, this is a nightmare. It was just a totally nightmare. All right, this is a good tip. Michelle says, for the gravity fed iron, I purchased an IV apple like they use in hospitals and hang the water bottle on that. It's on wheels. I bought my iron two years ago and it's again. So maybe I should get the gravity fed iron instead of the tulip pink iron. I don't know. That'd be cool. Easy off. Let me look. Yeah, it's good. Go to Wow, not sponsored. Go to Wawak Sewing and they have, they have it like they have the best prices there. Ooh, actually, they've got some really cute zippers on there, too. All right, let's see here. Yeah, they got some good stuff here. Yeah, these zippers are super, wow. 98 cents, that's not bad. Those are super cute. These col they're getting some really fun colors in the zippers. And you can get all different lengths. These are super cute. All right, why isn't this for refreshing? I don't know. Let's look for the easy off. Okay, hold on a sec. Easy off. Yeah, it's like not expensive at all. You do have to spend $99 to get free shipping, but I'm sure you, okay. It's a little, I think that's what about, but yeah, the, the tube is very large and I've purchased similar products with a much smaller tube and it was like more expensive for a smaller product. This is five and a half ounces or five and a quarter ounces, easy off professional iron cleaner. Yeah, I bought like three tubes. So yeah, I always keep a few of these. It's really great. And yeah, get it from Wawak because yeah, I found it on Amazon and it was like, it was a lot more expensive per ounce. Like, so yeah, that stuff is amazing. All right. Um. Yes, that is a good idea for the iron. So should I get, it'll look like I'm running a hospital or something. That's the thing, though, where am I? Like, I'm having trouble storing all this stuff. So that's the one hang up I have with the gravity fed irons is that that whole contraption would just take up more space. So that's why I'm not totally sold on it. Bamboo Ran has such a nice feel to, ooh, that sounds really nice. 
Uh, do you still use your walking foot for most projects? I just got one for my baby lock and seem to use it now all the time. I do. I use the walking foot for, like, most things. Um, that's, like, my default foot, so I use it a lot. All right, we've got a lot of votes for the gravity-fed iron. I'm curious about it. I just... That's the thing. Like, I just don't know if I want to store, like, the water thing. It's it's very... Like, it's, if you don't have a lot of space, it can be kind of a problem. All right. Our son and his family are in Gainesville, and the water is sketchy, especially with the hurricanes. They don't use the water or ice from their fridge because the quality changes and taints the piping. Yeah, the water here is... A, the quality here can be a bit uh, dicey. Um, I would wreck again, as the wife of a plumber... I am a little bit biased, but um, he thinks everyone should have a water softener. He also does not, he, he does not like the reverse osmosis. And there's a certain, he also thinks the salt, the ones with the salt free water softeners, he thinks are like a scam or something. He thinks those are like garbage. Um, oh, Ivy Pole. Okay, Ivy, I think it was like auto correcting or something. Okay. I was like, Ivy Apple, I don't know. I was thinking maybe that was like a medical term or something. Hello, Pam, thank you, thank you. We're having fun here. We're having fun. We're just chit-chatting about, about sewing tips and stuff. We got 50 live viewers. This is like maybe a record. I think this is one of the most viewed shows we've had yet. I live in Zephyr Hills. The tap water tastes nothing like what comes. So you live in the area where they make the Zephyr Hills bottled water. That's funny. All right, I got some tool in a grab bag order. Was wondering how small a seam I should use. I don't know. I, I personally have not sewn with tool before. If anyone else knows, help Terry out here. That's a good question. A tool seems like another fabric that would be kind of difficult to, to sew with. Um, okay, so I do want to share some things that I, some new announcements that I saw this week in the sewing world. So this is from our friends at Sew Tights. Just a disclaimer here, this is not sponsored, uh, but I have done some sponsored videos in on my main channel for Sew Tights. I am friendly with them, they're very cool. I like, the, I like how they run their business and I like how they've treated me as an influencer or content creator. Um, and I am an affiliate, so just keep that in mind. But they, 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 they're always coming out with new stuff and I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, Sew so Tights is coming out with a quilt hanging magnetic. Of course, everything's got magnets in it. So that you can now pre-order this quick hang magnetic quilt hanging system by Sew so Tights. It's uh, $64.99. Now, if you would like to pre-order this, you can get 15% off of your order with the coupon code Sewing Report. So again, save a little money there. And it's a really cool... So basically... The kit includes, so it comes with this little kit. You get some magnetic uh, strips. You get some long sew tights magnets that are in kind of a neutral gray color. You get some screws and drywall anchors to mount it. So you basically mount the metal strips on your wall or the surface you are installing it on. And then you can install your quilt. So it comes like this. So it's not super, this package looks fairly streamlined. So this is what you will get. And then this is how you can hang your quilt. So I thought this was really cool. And also, I like that this seems like very minimalistic. So it doesn't take up a lot of like, you know, like if you have a craft area or you want to, you know, display your quilts. I think this is a cool idea. But, but this is new from Sew so Tights. So it says stop the fuss and pain of hanging your quilts. Quickly and easily swap out your quilts with the Quick Hang Magnetic Quilt Hanging System. No more sewing pockets into the back of your quilts. No more fussing with getting it hung up. No more having to remove the pocket once you are done displaying it. So this is pretty cool. You'll have a super fast way to hang and swap out um, quilts on your walls. See, it says the system is four metal strips with pre-drilled holes to install in your wall permanently. You can leave them white or you can... Oh, this is cool. You can actually paint the strips to match your wall so it's like kind of blends in. Use all four strips spaced however far apart you would like them to accommodate all sides of quilts you use, or just use one or two if you hang small quilts. Once you have the strips installed in your wall, simply use the magnetic part of the six Sew Tights magnets included to secure your quilt 
onto the metal strips. Uh, they do have this disclaimer. Yes, the magnets will be visible when the quilt is on display. If you don't like that aspect, this product isn't for you. It's for people who want the ease of swapping out their quilts and don't mind the neutral gray magnets showing. Then when you're ready to change out your quilt, simply remove the magnets and voila. It's off in a few seconds and your quilt is ready to use again. I think this looks pretty cool. And um, it says the sew types magnets include the back so you can use the magnets for other sewing and quilting projects when not in use. I just think this looks pretty cool. It's a good idea. Um, I actually kind of did... Um, I didn't do this exact system because it, it this wasn't around. Um, but back when we lived in Atlanta, I used to display quilts on the wall in some of my videos. And I actually used an Ikea, it was like an Ikea curtain system. Um, and I just installed it on the wall and I used clips to hang the quilts. So there were, the clips were visible. Um, so that was my method. It was probably a similar cost um, if you break it down. Um, and you also had to install that. So it was like, yeah, like a track. And then you, you hung the clips and like, yeah, like it hung from something. Yeah, it, the, it hung and then you like clipped it up. But you can see them in some of my old, my old videos from Atlanta. Um, so there are quite a few different ways you can display quilts. I do think this is a cool idea from our friends at Sew Tights. So again, not sponsored, but if you are interested, you could purchase that right now from the website. You can also buy this hang stand if you would like to have a fun way to display your sew tights. I'm a big fan here. I use my sew tights a lot and I love the products. I love the, um, it's a female owned business run by two sisters, small business, very cool people. And uh, just really, you know, they're just always coming out with really useful products for uh, sewing, quilting and uh, crafters. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. What does everybody think here? Okay. Um, Good question. Do you normally stream on Sundays? I haven't been able to catch your lives because of school. Happy to see you again. Annihilator, yes, we've been doing Sundays, and I've been trying to play with the time. I think we'll probably stick with 6 p.m. Eastern time on Sundays. This seems to work out pretty well for everyone. The viewership is definitely here, um, and it's a little bit early. I was doing 7 o'clock. I'll probably be doing 6 o'clock, you know, just so that I'm not ending the show so late. So I think, I think we'll probably be doing 6 p.m. from here on out. Yeah, good idea. I also think it's really cute. Um, and there are a lot, obviously, there are many different ways to display quilts. Uh, I do like that this way you don't have to um, sew in a quilt pocket or like a quilt rod holder. And it seems, it, I like how easy they've made it to just switch out the quilt. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, do you manage to get dinner now in the evening? I actually did eat like a lunch. I'm trying to go to bed earlier and wake up earlier. So I ate a little bit before the stream so I'm not super hungry right now so we're doing good um in other news this was kind of interesting so I don't know if y'all have been over to the simplicity patterns website lately uh, but they did announce um something a couple days ago that I thought was kind of interesting and that is that they have made some of the vogue patterns um so they Simplicity, like the sewing pattern group, seems to be making a push towards digital. Everything's going digital, guys. We all know that. Uh, but they've been trying to push the PDF patterns. And they just announced that they've made some of the Vogue patterns um, a in the AO print size, which means instead of, instead of being printed out on like the 8.5 by 11 standard size paper that you have to like print and tape together and then cut out, this is just going to be on like one huge piece of paper that has to be printed at a copy shop. So like at Kinko's or one of those other office type stores. So if you do want to get your PDF pattern right away and then print it out at like a copy shop, you can do that. So here are some of the patterns that are now available in the copy shop print size. But I was looking at this and I noticed something kind of interesting now, I don't know about you, but I feel like the digital patterns should be a little bit cheaper than the paper patterns. And they're not. They're actually the same price. Like, so whether you get the paper pattern from Vogue or you get the digital pattern, they're currently $24.50. Which I, I was kind of like, wow, that's, uh, and they're currently not on sale or anything. 
I mean, here's my thing. If I'm going to pay the same price for the PDF or the paper, I'm just going to get the paper pattern, I guess. I don't know. And then if you want to if you want to get it printed out of the print shop, then you're paying more. So the if you get the PDF and then you get it printed out at your Kinkos, I got a pat I got a couple patterns printed out at Kinkos years ago, and I think it was at least five dollars per sheet. So then you're paying like another five, ten dollars for that, and it's more expensive than the paper pattern. So that's where I'm like that's where they kind of lose me. I'm like, that's m more expensive. The only benefit is that you get it instantaneously versus waiting for it to be shipped to you. But at the same time, I'm like, from a cost perspective, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me unless they, unless they made it cheaper than the paper patterns. Am I crazy or is, are you all like, yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And the other thing is, like, if I wanted to, like, you might say, okay, Jen, well, what if you want to print out different sizes and you don't want to, you know, just do that? You could take the tissue paper for the paper version and trace over it. So if you don't want to do that, you could just get it and then you could trace onto tracing paper and use that as the pattern. So you still keep your tissue paper intact. I've done that before. I've used Swedish tra tracing paper and I've used regular tracing paper. And that works out fine if you don't want to actually cut up the pattern tissue itself. But here we're, they're charging the same price for the digital version as the paper version. And then if you want to get it printed at a print shop, you got to pay like 5 to $10 more for that. And if you're just doing it on your regular printer, then you have to use all that printer ink and paper and then spend all that time printing, taping all the pieces together and cutting it out. I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I thought that was like, it's, I'm glad they're offering it, but at the same time, I feel like they should make the digital patterns cheaper than the paper patterns. Like maybe like, like at least 30% cheaper. Like that might motivate me a little bit more, but when it's the same price, you're like, you're kind of side-eyeing them and you're um, just wondering what the logic is here. So I don't know if it's just me, but I, I, do, I just think the digital version should be cheaper. And they're charging $24.50 for a digital version of the pattern. I think that's kind of crazy. All right, uh, got some questions. I think gnomes have run its course. What do you suggest is, what's, a, what's the gnomes? I'm not as the next hot projects. That's a good, I'm probably not like the best person to ask about trends because I tend to sew with patterns that are not the latest. Um, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of like TikTok type people making like, doing like upcycle projects. A lot of the younger people are doing like, um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm probably not like a fashion plate, but I would probably check TikTok because the TikTok sewing people seem to be like kind of up on the, the fashion trends. Anyone use Berta patterns in their print magazine or try a PDF pattern download? It's confusing. I have not tried the Berta patterns myself. That's interesting. How do you keep the sew tights from grabbing your needle plate? Um, that's a good question. I, you know, I haven't had too many issues on my sewing machine, and I've used I've used my sew tights at the Juki, which is an industrial machine. I haven't had too much of a problem with it. You know, I don't know. But, yeah, and mine has, like, my machine is metal, and it's not computerized over there. I It just hasn't really been much of a problem. I don't know why. It probably should be, but it's, it's really not. All right, Denise says, that's good to know about the AO. I learn something new all the time. I would prefer a large sheet PDF print. Yes, a PDF should be cheaper. Exactly, like they should charge, I would say minimum 30% less than the paper version. Um, unless the pattern is like two ninety. dollars like if the pattern's like $2.99, I would be fine either way. Um, but when, when the paper version is, when they're both $24, you're like, that's crazy. I'll just get the paper version if it's the same price. Yeah. I, I do. 
I have used PDF patterns before and it's convenient, but it can be costly if your printer isn't energy efficient. Exactly, you're using a ton, you're using a lot of printer ink. Um, I have a laser printer, so it's not that much of a problem, but the inkjet ones just, they just eat up so much ink real fast. So instead of the pattern companies paying for the paper and ink, you're paying for it. Exactly. This is why they should charge less for the PDFs. I totally agree. It costs about $10 to print in one large page for a pattern. That's good to know. I, I had done this a few years ago, so it was about five years ago. I remember it being about $5. I think it was around there, and I got it printed at a Kinko's. Oh, ink efficient, yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we, get, we get what you mean, Annihilator. Thank you. I gotta go get my middle son. Thanks for the chat. All right, have a good one. Tired of trolls. I like your username. If JA goes under any suggestions where to get affordable fabrics. All right, there are a couple. Um, and this is actually in the description box. I, I do have an, a referral link for uh, Fabric Wholesale Direct. Those are like, now I'll be honest. These are not like top of the line fabrics, but they are very inexpensive. Uh, so you can find a link in the description box of this uh, video. A fabric Wholesale Direct. Another one is uh, Fashion Fabrics Club. I've ordered from there before, and they're pretty decent. I haven't, I've ordered a couple things from Mood, but they're kind of pricey. So that's, I would probably say, Fashion Fabrics Club. You can also purchase quilting cotton from me at the Sewing Report Etsy shop. I try to have some pretty decent, decent sales here. Here, let me show you guys a Fashion Fabrics Club here. This is a good one. Now this, th this is more of like, I don't know if it's like they're selling remnants or like, these are not, a lot of their fabrics are like one and done. So if you like the fabric, get it because um, you might not be able to get it again. They do have some reorderable fabrics, but a lot of the fabrics are, you know, kind of like last chance kind of stuff. But I've ordered from there before, and I thought the quality was pretty good. Um, price is not bad, and they do have a lot of sales. Free shipping over $79, which is actually pretty easy to, to get to. Uh, so this is a pretty decent website. Yeah, and they have some cute... Oh, this is cute. Cotton stretch. That's sort of adorable. And they have, like, some cute fabric. Like, it's not, you know, it's not like... Sometimes some of these websites have, like, kind of hideous fabric... It's very taste specific. They also have a lot of like apparel fabrics. They've got suiting fabrics. They have, I believe they have denim. This fabric is getting so expensive. I've also seen recently, I've seen a lot of more people selling fabric on Etsy. I can't attest to the quality of all of it, but I've seen a lot of like overseas sellers uh, selling like knit fabrics polyester fabrics, um, even some cotton, so it depends. I've seen some silk. So you could always check Etsy as well for specific fabrics. All right, okay, we do have some, also, we got a couple comments from Rumble. Okay, no, we, we do, sorry guys. All right, Magic Wanders, so, Ma Magic Wands of Two says, I hate when PDF patterns have a time limit for downloads, but I prefer downloads so I can reprint if the future in the future if I need a different size and want to remake a pattern. I also find printer paper more sturdy and, and easier to cut out. Thank you for the comments. I try to check the live chat on all of the platforms. It is easier with the YouTube people. Sorry, guys. Uh, just because it's on my StreamYard. And StreamYard does not support some platforms. Um, I think I can see the Twitch comments. We don't usually get a lot of Twitch people. so But I do try to look at all the comments. So thank you to everyone that's re leaving comments on all platforms. All right, let's see here. Okay. All right. Digital patterns are more expensive than buying the garment. Yeah. That is really a good point. Yeah. And even the paper ones, like those Vogue patterns that, not on, that, that were $24, you're like, yeah, it kind of almost defeats the purpose. That is a good point. Those are really expensive. Uh, the ditto will make this easier. No paper or printing involved, but still dealing with, dealing with the subscription. I know, guys. I got to get that thing out of the box. It's just... It's huge, and it, I'm kind of like, I haven't been very motivated just because the box is so ginormous, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And it's kind of a whole ordeal, like, doing the unboxing and everything, so I'm like, I don't know. So, but I, I have it. I just haven't opened it yet. 
All right, this may work more for international customers. That's a good point. Uh, that's the other thing. Will international customers want to pay $25 USD for a digital pattern? I mean, they've got to be cheaper options out there. Like, that seems really expensive. I taught p computer pattern drafting about 10 years ago. We used a landscaping plotter to print out the paper patterns. Then my students had to drape the pattern for fit. That's really cool. There, I don't know much about pattern drafting. I'll be completely honest. All right, big four patterns are so behind the times in every way. Yeah, I, I think they've got a lot of catching up to do, especially when they are especially when they are like competing with all of the indie pattern companies, you know? So, you know, it is what it is. It is. All right. The pattern companies increase profit with this trend. Personally do not like digital. It's time wasting printing cut and paste. You know, I, I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. Debbie, $24. No, no, I know. Right. It's $24 and 50 cents for digital pattern. That's just, yeah. The Dollar Tree has a lot of gnome decor for the garden at the stores right now. I'll be real, I'm not that, I've never been into the gnome stuff myself. I've seen it everywhere. Plus, um, it is very popular in Florida. Um, and it was very popular, like I'm originally from New York State and it was very popular like up in the suburbs there. So yeah. Is there a limit you can print a PDF pattern? I think once you download it, I don't believe so. So once you download it to your computer, you know, you ju it's just yours. You should be able to do that. I use the PDF patterns and upload them to Cricut. Yeah, I haven't tried that myself. Um, how do you, do you have to turn it, you have to turn it into like some sort of SVG file though, right? Or something like that. Yeah, there should be a better cost for PDF. Indie pattern companies offer two different prices. I was happy about the AO option until you shared the price. I guess they offer AO to go with the ditto. That's maybe, yeah, maybe it's for like the projector people. I guess that could be a thing. All right, I put the patterns together in Photoshop. Yeah, I'm not, I'll be real. I'm not that great with Photoshop, but I know a lot of people do that. I'm also not great with the pat, the projector stuff. That's why I thought the ditto would be better for me because I'm like not, I'm just not very with that whole thing. I don't use PDF patterns because I don't want to piece it all together. It seems like extra work. I like vintage patterns. For some reason, they seem easier to read to me. That's a good point here. All right, then I go to FedEx. Yeah, FedEx, I think Kinko's. I will say I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the UPS store, guys. I, know, I, th I don't know if some of them offer printing, but I don't know what it is. But every time I go to the UPS store, they're really rude to me. So I really try to avoid the UPS store just based on... Uh, personal experience. All right. Yes. I also, I've had a good experience with fabric wholesale direct. I, you know, again, it's not like the most top quality fabric, but you really can't beat the prices. In fact, I buy 24 ounce, you heard that right? 24 ounce canvas. And I use that as the floor in my rabbit's uh, pen. It's the only canvas she has not really been able to chew through. It's super thick. Um, and I use it as like kind of her carpet so she doesn't like slide around in there. And it's fairly cheap. Like, I think it's like $25 for like three yards and then I cut it in half. Um, and I, I save one piece for later. When it gets super gross, I throw it. You can't really, that's the thing. You can't really wash, it doesn't wash very well. I tried washing it and it did not go well. Um, but I use it for like at least half a year. And then I toss it. it. Guys, it just gets really gross. It's in a rabbit's cage. Um, but it's a good floor for here for her. After a while, though, it just gets kind of nasty. And you can't really clean it anymore. And I tried throwing it in the washer and dryer, and it did not go well. So, But it's fairly cost effective. It's like better than a drop cloth, and she can't chew through it. I have a liquid cannon printer, so I can print all day. That's interesting. Mega tank. I used to work at Kinko's. I'm a fan of Kinko's. I've had good experiences at Kinko's. All right, this is a good suggestion. Nick Textiles has some good deals. All right, I have not tried that, but thank you for the suggestion. Ordered from Fabric Wholesale Direct and have been very happy. Love their grab bags. I get to practice, learn to sew with fabrics that I often don't, I uh, don't, don't often get a chance to. I have not tried the grab bags, but that's a good suggestion too. Joanne's does not carry all the pattern catalogs for you to browse anymore. Just gone. No explanation. Wow. 
And they were there. Like, when I was there the last time, they were all there. Like, that was a few months ago. That's kind of crazy there. All right, I'm going to get a drink real quick. I was just looking at their sale online. Yeah, the Fabric Wholesale Direct uh, website. Like they, And they've been adding, I've noticed they've been adding more and more stuff. So the selection has gotten better. And again, not sponsored, but I do have an affiliate. Here, I'll put it in the, and I've, I bought, I think I bought some of their stretch, did I buy their stretch velvet? They have some really cute fabrics. Again, it's not like the, it's not like couture quality, but it's fairly budget friendly. I think for what it is. Here, I'll get the affiliate link here too. All right, Steph says, I Googled dress fabric by the yard and Joanne's is not at the top anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good, there's a lot going on here. There is a lot going on. All right, let me find the Fabric Wholesale Direct link. Do I have it here? Did I get rid of it? All right, I might have to go to an older thing. All right, but yeah, I do have a link here. Let me see if I can find it here. And it's not really an affiliate thing. Basically, every time I refer someone to Fabric Wholesale Direct, I get like a, like points or something like that. It's so you don't get paid, but you just get points towards a coupon or something. It's something along those lines. Let's see here. And they have a lot of sales and deals and stuff. So there's a lot. There's a lot you could do with it. All right, let me get my, my link here. <clears throat> All right, I don't know why, but it says Black Friday sale. That, mu I'm, that might be a mistake or something. I don't know. Let's see here. Where is the... Yeah, you used to have a thing where you could, like, share a link or something. Let me see if I can find it here. Maybe they stopped it. Yeah, I don't see. I wonder if they, like, discontinued that. I don't know. But yeah, they used to have, like, a referral thing. I don't know what happened to that. Let's see here. Account... All right, I got to mute myself real quick. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait, there. here's the rewards program. Okay, here's the referral link. Okay, so it says give your friends a reward and claim your own when they make a purchase. So whenever you use this link, you can get... Um, a $10, you get like $10 off your purchase. So here's my, I'll put this in the comments here. Fabric wholesale. I should probably put this back in, I, I don't know why I took it out of the description box. But I should put it back. Yeah, we'll put it back here, here we go. All right, so if you go to this link, you can get, I believe it says, I believe it's like $10 off your order or something like that. So you get a $10 off coupon for a referral. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, I should probably put it back in the description box because, yeah. But, yeah, it's a good site. Right, let's see here. Wow, we've, guys, we have 50. This is, like, the most viewers we've had. We've got 55 on YouTube and Rumble, and then we've got 18. Oh, wait, 55 on YouTube and Twitch. 18 on Rumble. I think this is the most viewers we've had at the same time. So thanks, thanks everyone. So many fabric webs. This is a good point. Yes, this is a problem. So many fabric websites are difficult to search and navigate. I completely hear you on this. That's pretty crazy. Okay, this is a suggestion for Magic Wands of Two. Uh, dressmakingamore.com is having a 50% off sale. For the next 24 hours. Okay, let's check out Dress Making More. 
I am so over all the floral. Okay. I, you know, I think florals are cute, but I hear you. Some of, it's like too much. Sometimes it's too much. And I'm a little bit taste specific about the florals too. Some florals, I think are, like the Rifle Paper Co. florals are cute, but I'm not a fan of like every floral. So I hear you. All right, let's check out dressmaking more. If anyone has any other good suggestions for fabric sites. Okay, this is cute. Is this a U.S. site? I don't know. Do they have fabric here? Oh, it's a 50% off sale patterns. Okay. Okay, I, I'm not familiar. All right, guys, I cannot. I don't have. Now, full disclaimer, I this was suggested by Magic Wands of Two. I have no idea what the site is, and I, I've not tried any of the patterns. But these are PDF patterns for uh, eight, between like seven and eight dollars. So that's definitely a lot cheaper. All right. So if you are looking for again, I I cannot vouch for this company because I don't. Actually, these pants are kind of cute. All right. I this I don't have a body like that, but these pants are kind of awesome looking. Are these made of knit? Okay. Oh, and they've got some. Um, at least they have some YouTube tutorials. I will give them credit for that. Let's check out the tutorial. Art to both sides. All right. The dart in half. I mean, the tutorial's not bad. To their credit, at least they have a video. These pants look super comfortable. I don't look like her, but um, if I did, everything would be great. Um, but that's not a bad price for an indie pattern company. So again, I don't have any experience with this company at all. But this is not a, these are not bad for PDF patterns for clothing. These pants actually look kind of comfortable. And the thing is, what I like about sewing your, I need to sew some pants because what I like about sewing your own pants is that I have, um, I have kind of a high waist, but like short legs. So I need like petite, I need like the shorter inseams because a lot of pants tend to be too long. But at least when you're making your own pants, you get to decide what the hem like this. So that is kind of nice. I'll have to check that out because those pants actually look, those pants look pretty cool. Oh, and they've got some free patterns. Again, I don't know anything about this company, so I've not tried if, you know, if you've tried, okay. Magic Wands of Two says, I've tested her patterns and bought some. They are wonderful. Okay, so we have one viewer that says the patterns are awesome. All right, you can get a free blouse pattern if you give them your email. I will say the pant, all right, oh, and she separates, at least this website looks fairly easy to navigate, and it looks like she has some video tutorials, which is certainly helpful. Some of this stuff isn't my style, um, the Jude, okay, this is a bundle, so you get, this is actually not bad, you get the pants and the top, okay, this looks, this looks more my style, honestly, I'm a fan of loungewear, if you can't tell. These are actually pretty cute. Um, all right, would it, June and Jade, are these tops? Oh, these are June top. Okay, I'm a little confused. I don't know if I could pull off this top. The top actually does look kind of comfortable though. So you can get a top and get the pants for like ten fifty. That's not bad. I want to know. Okay, at least this top actually looks kind of cute. You know, if I could put some bra pads in there, I might do that because this actually looks pretty cute. I'm kind of into this. Maybe I'll sew some clothes, guys. Be using something back of the top right sides together. All right, and I will say this then tutorial actually looks. To their credit, the tutorial actually looks fairly okay. Like she, it's clear, so it's she explains stuff. It down. I just want to know though, do the arm, I am a little concerned. I'm wondering if like, does she stabilize the, the shoulders? Because I feel like those could get stretched out really easily. So I would be kind of curious if, um, I'd be sort of curious, like, if she stabilizes the shoulders, because I feel like those could get stretched out really easily. So I would probably want to put, like, some sort of stabilizer in the arm, in the shoulders. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I haven't sewn a lot of clothes in a while. 
but those actually do those patterns actually thank you for that because those patterns actually do look like that's actually stuff I would wear I mean the top just around the house because I don't have the body to wear that out in public but those are pretty cute actually I, I kind of dig those all right let's take a look at some more here these are actually pretty cute like that dress I wouldn't wear I wouldn't wear the dresses I would wear the uh the sweat stuff though now this is definitely my vibe here the Cleo and Luna sweatpants and sweatshirt I could vibe with that for sure it's you just need medium weight fabric interfacing elastic yeah that looks cute and again, I appreciate that at least, at least you get a video tutorial with it. So hopefully you can follow up. That actually doesn't look bad. Thank you for the suggestion because that actually looks pretty cool. If anyone has any other suggestions for uh, fabric shops or again, maybe more indie pattern companies, let me know. We can share them here. All right, let's see some comments here. I have an Epson EcoTank printer. Ink comes in huge bottles. That's cool. You pay more for the printer up front, but the ink is cheap. I paid two thirty ish about three years ago. Yeah, I I have a Canon inkjet printer, but I don't usually print in color. I usually use the the we have a brother laser printer, and I usually just use that. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Yes, this is what I wanted. I wanted this to be like a a place we could we knew. You know you can go every Sunday. We can hang out. We can chat. You can chill while you're sewing something, and we can just talk, go over some news. There wasn't a lot. That's the thing. I was I I actually look look online to see what's going on. There wasn't a whole lot, and I was looking in a lot of places. I lurk in a few subreddits to see like what people are talking about. Uh, but I I do think I do like the sew tights uh, quilt hanging system. I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, this. Like, the PDF patterns, I was like, I was looking at the simple, I'm like, these are $24 for a PDF pattern. With a, like, I'm, it's cool it comes with the print shop format, but that's just really expensive. All right, Terry says, I get Fabric Mart bundles. They are cheap to buy and cost about $2 a yard. You can't beat that. All right, gnomes are huge in Sweden. Well, okay. Yeah, I, there, I feel like gnomes were, like, bigger in the United States, like, I feel like I saw them a lot more like 10 years ago, like 10, 15 years ago. I don't see them as much now. And I do live in Florida, so there are a lot of like retired people. I feel like if it was a thing, I would see more of that stuff. Um, you know, I do see some wind chimes stuff. I'm trying to think what else I see with decor. You know, people have ducks. I don't know, sometimes... My neighborhood, you're not, like, I'm in an HOA restricted neighborhood, so you're not allowed to put, like, you're not, like, you can't go too crazy with, like, the permanent yard decor, because I think the HOA would come after us. You can do seasonal decorations, but only at, like, certain times of the year or something like that. I had to, re I recently had to pass along all my commercial patterns because the paper was setting off my allergies. Ooh, that's something I didn't think about, but that's a good point there. Sorry about, is it the paper that you're allergic to? What are you, or is it just like, you know, are they getting like, is it getting musty? What's going on there? I'm saving up for a plotter printer just for this situation. Hey, that's not a bad idea here. Not a bad idea. Okay, we have another suggestion. All right, let's see, check this out. Fabrics store. Let's see, fabricstore.com. Let's check this out. Um... Okay, this is this doesn't look bad. All right, let's check this place out. All right, this is a uh, fabrics, and again, these are viewer suggestions. I have not had personally. This is fabrics-store.com. Here, I'll link it in the chat. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Oh wow! I and I'm really I'm a little bit far behind with the chat, so. We'll get, we'll get to this. But I just linked to this. This is fabricstore.com. Upgrade your home and wardrobe with high quality, medium weight linen fabric. That's cool. Okay, okay. Hey, for the floral lovers, lovers here, we got some florals. All right, we got free PDF patterns. Okay, this is, hey, if you like linen, 
the 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 prices it's not super cheap but the the quality actually looks pretty good so this looks pretty cool i don't know where this i don't know where this company is let's see here is this i don't i don't know hopefully they ship to the united states but i have no idea but this stuff looks kind of nice handkerchief weight okay 100 percent linen so if you're trying to do some of that stuff all right let's see what we got here I got plain weave, dobby weave. Okay, so so this is more of a woven. Okay, cotton poplin would be cool. I I do like cotton poplin. That's a that's a fun fabric to sew with. And uh, the Liberty of London cotton poplin is really nice quality. I own some, but I haven't cut into it yet. These are real cute, and actually a lot of these florals are like I feel like these are like kind of tasteful florals. They're not cheesy. This is cool. Like I would I would wear something like this. Oh, and you can you can also shop by the bowl too too. Not definitely not cheap, but you can tell this is probably pretty nice quality. And you know, let's be real, fabric is just getting more expensive. So alright, this place looks pretty cool. So yeah, everyone's looking for suggestions. You know, again, Joanne seems to be kind of hit or miss with the ordering situation um, and the fabric selection. So that could be kind of adventurous here. All right, Lisa says, projectors seem like such a pain to set up, especially if you don't sew that many garments. That's why I haven't gotten into like the, that ha using the regular projectors and like hacking them. I, yeah, if you sew a lot of clothes, I think it makes sense. If you don't sew a lot of clothes, it makes less sense. So I think that's a good point. Yes, great tips. Thanks for everyone for chiming in and giving your suggestions. Because, you know, and that's the thing. I haven't bought a ton of fabric lately, so I don't even know. Like, I buy a lot of quilting cotton from, like, directly from my distributors. But I don't, you know, I'm not shopping around for fabric a lot lately. All right, Fabrics Merchants has retail and wholesale good deals if you are on the west coast of U.S. All right, that's a good one, too. Okay. Oh, boy. I went to the UPS store today to get my CPA exam. Study material spiral bound. The associate ruined the book. What? I, I swear. Everywhere I've lived, the UPS store has been terrible. I think there's been two UPS stores I've ever gone to where they were, like, nice and I would go back. Uh, but generally my experience at the UPS store is a night. It's like, I actually was so upset after my last UPS store visit that I, I tried to write a bad Google review. And for some reason, like Google wouldn't accept it. I don't know if maybe I was, I was, you know, I wasn't cursing or anything. And I was very matter of fact, but for some reason Google didn't accept it. But, uh, the, the guy working, one of the guys working there was like incredibly rude to me for no reason. Like it was totally unprovoked. And I was like, what is up with the attitude here? Like, it's like he was bothered by just having to work. And I was like, what's up with that? So, all right, I'll tell you the story. So I go, um, I had to return something at the UPS store. And you have to return it at UPS. You don't have any other options. So at the UPS store I went to, I'd had an okay experience there before. Like, it wasn't terrible. Um, but... I've noticed UPS stores are starting, like, they don't, instead of you going to the counter and them, like, you know, scanning in your package, they now have these, like, drop-off spots where, like, if you're bringing in a return or a prepaid shipping label, you just drop it into this, like, it looks like a laundry hamper. So I went to the UPS store, and I had the return, and the return was, like, it was something that was well over $100, so I, I want, you know, I was a little bit concerned, you know, about something happening to the package because, you know, this isn't a $10 item. This was over a hundred bucks. And I get to the UPS store and there's the little drop off spot. So here's the situation. There's a little hamper. It's totally open. Like at the, at the U, at the post office, if you go and drop off a package, it's that like slot in the wall. But once you put the package in, you can't get the package out and no one else can get, can like tamper with it or steal stuff. At this UPS store, 
By the way, I'll say it was the UPS store in Apollo Beach, Florida. Do not recommend. If you are watching, you guys suck. Apollo Beach, Florida, remember that. Do not go to that UPS store. They are terrible. So I get there, and there's a hamper. It's literally just an open hamper, and it's right next to the door. So from a security standpoint, anyone could have come in, taken a package, and left. It was not particularly busy. There were really not, like, there were maybe four or five customers at the store, and there were at least four employees. So they can't use the excuse like we were really busy or slammed. It was not. I went on a weekday at like 1 p.m., not busy at all, and they had at least four employees. So I walked in, and I was like, yeah, I'm not leaving my return in the hamper thing because this looks very unsecure. Literally, anyone could have walked in, grabbed a package, and booked it, and they wouldn't have been able to do anything because the hamper is right next to the door. No one's watching the hamper. There's not, like, an employee standing there. And there's also no, like, scanning thing, so there would be no record. So if somebody stole the package, there would be no record of you dropping it off there because, you know, you're just dropping it there. You don't scan it and drop it in. You just drop it there. So I go in, and I was like, yeah, I'm not leaving it there. So I got in line, and there was, like, there was literally one person ahead of me in line. So it's not like, again, it was not super busy. All right, there's this douchebag. I'm telling you, there's this douchebag guy. He looks like he's 24 or something. He had bleached blonde tips. Bleached blonde tips, if that tells you anything about his attitude. And this guy gives me, like, a dirty look. And he's like, he's like, you know, you can just, you, you, he said something like, you know, you can just, you know, you can just, uh, why aren't you using the, the self-service uh, Dropbox? I was like, I said, you know, I'd rather, I just said I would rather have it scanned in at the counter. He's like, and he said something like, he had like a, he had a huge, he had like a very poor attitude. And he's like, why do you need to do that? I was like, because I, you know, I was like, you know, I'm here. I should be able to choose what I want to do. And he was, he was very visibly upset. And he started like yelling at me and calling me out for not using the freaking Dropbox. And I, wa I wasn't going to do it. I was like, yeah, I'm, I was like, and I said to him straight out, I was like, look, um, this is a return and I want to make sure, I want to make sure it's actually scanned in because there are some scams, you know, and I also want to make sure that the company I'm returning this to doesn't claim I returned an empty box. And I also said, I want to get the weight of the package when it gets scanned in. The guy like rolls his eyes at me and he, he, again, he's like, he's like, He's like, why, he's like, why do you have to do, I was like, why does it matter? So I, I finally get to, again, there was a one customer in front of me. So luckily I did not get him to like serve me. It was a, a young lady and she like, didn't say shit. She was like, just very quiet. She, Cause this guy had like an outburst for no reason. And I actually did write an email to the, I wrote an email to the store and I never heard back either. I was so mad. I was like, this guy is an asshole. And he, he was, like, yelling at me for no reason and, like, trying to shame me for, you know, wanting, like, personal service instead of, you know, I mean, God forbid I want somebody, you know, God forbid I ask anybody to work there, you know. But, again, the reason I was doing that was because, again, I did not feel very good about this Dropbox situation. And, you know, it shouldn't matter. Like, I should be able to choose the level of service I want at the freaking UPS store. And the guy was, like, beyond rude. For, like, no, and that's the thing, I didn't say any, like, he just immediately started, like, yelling at me, and I didn't, I didn't say anything until he started, like, antagonizing. The whole thing was very weird. I will never go back to that UPS store, and I will publicly bash UPS from now until the end of time, because that guy was just such a jerk. All right, anyways, sorry for the, sorry for the tirade there, but I was just so, this happened months ago, and I still feel angry thinking about it. All right. All right, Moonbow Arts Hand Knits. I work at Joanne's. Our store still has the pattern, pattern books. Thank you for letting us know. Moonbow Arts hand, hand Knits, I don't know how much you can say publicly, but how are things, how have things been for you as a Joanne employee? How are you hanging in there? Let us know. All right, uh, 
Nihal says, uh, uh, fabric wholesale direct sweatshirt material is so soft. I need to, I want to try the sweatshirt. I have not tried the sweatshirt material. And they are bringing in new stuff all the time. And I want to try some more of it because it looks cool. All right, Jackie, I know you had to go. Jackie's probably gone now because I'm a little bit behind. But thank you, Jackie, for joining in. I really appreciate everyone tuning in here. All right, if companies are selling PDF patterns, sewists will have to take dressmaking uh, classes. Hey, I, I think that'd be cool. I, I, I think more of us, you know, and again, that's one of my goals for this year is to become a better sewist. And I'll probably more do the online learning thing, but, you know, hey, I think that's cool. Yeah, t take some dressmaking classes. Yeah, that top was super cute, wasn't it, from that, from that website? I thought that was super cool. Super cool here. All right, I'm going to switch things around over here. Yes, those patterns look pretty cool at that, um, I forgot what the company, oh, um, what was it called? Dressmaking, dressmakingamore.com. Yes, they did look kind of cool. I was kind of curious about that. All right, I would change the sweatshirt to have raglan, raglan sleeves. Okay, um, a good sweatshirt pattern with raglan sleeves is, uh, Grain, Grain Line Studios. I think they've got a good one. Let me check it out. Grainline Studio has, I've made this pattern several times, and it's really good, and it has raglan sleeves, and it's kind of easy to customize. Let me try it. Um, where is it? Oh, it's called the Linden Sweatshirt. I keep forgetting. All right, let me check this out. All right, I need to mute myself because I have to cough again. All right, and now you'll notice the paper version of this one is $18. Let's see how much the PDF is. Okay, see, the P at least this one they charge less for the PDF. So the PDF is $16, and the paper pattern is $18. So at least they do give you a little bit of a savings. And you can make, um, this has a raglan sleeve, and it's got um, a short sleeve option as well. So it's got a couple different versions. I, I think I've only made the short sleeve once. But I've made several of the long sleeve. It's a very easy and quick sew. I actually have a, I think I have a video on the channel from like a while ago making this. And it's, it's not, it does not take long. Especially if you, if you have a serger, it really comes in handy. But this is a great pattern. And it's not, like it's a very beginner friendly pattern. And it's, because it's a sweatshirt, like the fit doesn't have to be totally perfect. So you can really, um, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving with the fit, so that is pretty nice, too. So that's a good one. All right, we have another suggestion. Let's see here. A Blackbird fabric. All right, let's see. Blackbird. All right, let's see here. Oh, that's a good one from Fashion Fabrics Club. Okay. All right, this one's Canadian, so if you are Canadian, this might be cool. All right, let's see here. What's with... All right, one thing that drives me crazy is all the pop-ups on websites. Um, see, like, guys... No, just no. All right. Oh, sorry. I don't have the pulled up. Okay, so this is uh, Blackbird Fabrics. This is a Canadian site. I don't really need 15% off my first order. Okay, that's a cool uh, pattern there they got. I don't know where they ship to, but that's cool. So, again, we're getting lots of fabric suggestions here. The, the quality of these fabrics seem really nice. Here's the thing, though. I have some linen fabric. I The only thing is I don't find I sew, I don't sew a ton with linen. Um, I don't particularly love linen for clothing. It's just not my favorite material for, but again, I wear sweatpants a lot, so that's why I tend to go for that kind of stuff. All right, let's see here. All right, Vogue Fabrics used to send a nice catalog by mail. Oh, that would be cool. Is, is Vogue Fabrics still around, too? Let's check. Vogue Fabrics. Okay, they are. All right, apparently they are. All right, there's still a thing here. All right. So Vogue Fabrics, you can still shop online here. Their website, though, is like very 90s. This is not... I, they need to update the website. Like, this is... Yeah, guys... All right, let's see their silk fabric. Let's see what they got. I think silk would be fun to sew with. Maybe trying some stuff out. 
Let's see. Silks. All right. Silk solid fabrics. Let's see what's. All right. Fourteen ninety nine a yard. Yeah, I haven't sewn a lot with. Um, I'm kind of curious about sewing with silk though, because I've noticed a lot of companies are selling like silk pillowcases and silk scrunchies. I would love to try to make some silk scrunchies and silk pillowcases to, to DIY that because they are really expensive. If you get the mulberry silk, they're pretty expensive. So I'm a little bit curious about that. All right, so we got Vogue Fabrics as another option. Machine repair, that's kind of interesting. All right, apparently you can get your machine repaired if you live in Evanston, Illinois. Okay, cool, cool. You can do wholesale. So we still do, all right, it's good to know we do have some options. I feel like they're just more, like, not so mainstream. Like, a lot of these are not as mainstream. So, but the, they do exist. And hopefully, if if things with Joann's keep heading in the direction they are, um, maybe this would give some opportunity for smaller businesses or more niche fabric companies to kind of, you know, take take the reins here. So, there are a lot of good options there. All right, I was at another live before joining. Well, thank you for stopping over here. I know live streams are fun. I enjoy watching them and lurking in the chats too. So that's always cool. All right, do you have a project you are working on at the moment? You know, I actually don't. I need to start a new, I do need to start some new projects. So I actually uh, don't. I'm, I've just been working on like editing and stuff and I haven't really been, you know. Yeah, that's one of my goals this year is to get more sewing time in. All right, uh, it could be the ink causing allergy. Okay, you're referring to, okay, Denise is allergy to old patterns. Okay, I think it's the recycled paper content. They're in an acid-free box and my house is pretty dry. That's interesting. I love linen. I'm into the wrinkle, easy wear look of linen. I, You know, I like linen fabric. I just, I need more projects like, I can do, like, home-type stuff or, like, linen napkins or linen placemats. I just personally don't find linen clothing for me to be very comfortable. All right, you can find plotter printers at building planner companies. They sell old printers very cheap. That, you know, if you, hey, if you have the space, maybe you could run, like, a bootleg operation. You could get a printer for your basement, and then you could, like, print PDF patterns for all your friends or something. That'd be kind of funny. All right, Style Maker Fabrics is my favorite online store. Very nice quality. All right, good suggestion there. All right, not a fan of like florals. All right, you really don't like florals. That's pretty funny. Not a fan of florals. Okay, let's see here. All right, uh, tell me how you use the sew tights. I'm a quilter and do not sew things very often. Okay, so I have been using the sew tights. I use them a lot with embroidery projects. So when I'm doing embroidery and I'm floating things over the hoop instead of hooping them, I will often use the sew tights to like kind of keep the item in place. Also, a lot of projects, if I'm using a fabric that has like some texture or like toweling fabric or anything that's like kind of fluffy or like has a bit of a nap, I'll put some water soluble topper over everything just so that the stitches don't get hidden. And then I'll put sew tights over the topper to keep everything in place. Um, I'll also use them when I'm sewing if I'm, they're good for keeping, like if you're sewing like a pocket into something and it's in the middle of the fabric and you don't wanna poke holes in the fabric, they're good for that. Um, so I'll do that if I'm, especially if I, you know, if I'm working with a fabric or if you're working with something like leather where you can't put pinholes in them and you need to secure those materials in the middle of the fabric so not near the edge, I will use sew tights. Often if I'm doing like um, like vinyl, any sort of vinyl or any sort of like leather, faux leather, anything where you definitely can't put pinholes in something and you want to keep those, keep layers together in the middle like you're doing a pocket or you're doing like you know say you're doing some apple k so they are they do come in handy for that a lot of people use them for english paper piecing i don't do a lot of english paper piecing but i've seen a lot of people use them for that i just find they come in like i'm always finding new ways to use them 
and it's fun. So I also like the colors. They come in a lot of fun colors. Like these are the lights. So these are a little less, they're a little bit like, they don't have quite the strength. So it's good because some, some of the stronger ones, like the green ones, you know, they are a little bit harder to pull apart. And sometimes you don't need like full strength so tights. These are the smaller ones, but I, I do really like them. And I find, I, I find new ways to use them a lot. So they are cool. Um, you know, you try, pick up a pack and try it out. Um, and I can see them, let me think about quilting. I feel like you could find, a lot of people, um, they also sell, I don't sell them myself, but you can get these on the Sew Tights website. If you do long arming, a lot of people are using, um, like they sell very long sew tights and you can use them to um, uh, keep your, like, whenever you're kind of attaching your quilting to like the leader material, um, they sell those on the website too, but they, they have a lot of different types of sew tights and they're also coming out with a lot of products just for sewing and quilting in general that are just really cool. I also have a magnetic, I, I have a magnetic pin cushion. Let me see if I can find it. And that's really cute too. All right, where did it go? All right, I have it around somewhere here. <clears throat> All right, I can't find my pin cushion, but I have the uh, magnetic pin cushion. I have a magnetic pin cushion and you can actually attach it to your shirt. Like, so it attaches with a magnet and then you can just put your pins on like your chest. Obviously, uh, disclaimer, you cannot use these around pacemaker. So if you do have a pacemaker, I do not recommend so tight products at all because you can't do that. Um, they're pretty good. And a lot of people ask about um, computerized sewing machines. You can generally use them around a computerized sewing machine because the magnets aren't to a strength where it would like damage the computerized parts. So as long as you're using them like around the bed of your machine, you should be okay. All right. Uh, oh, this is about the UPS store. They get minimum wage to show up not to care. Dude, that guy with the bleach tips, I will never forget him. He's probably one of the worst, like, the worst, probably one of the worst, like, retail employees I've ever come into contact with in my entire life. This guy was so rude. Yes, I always ask, yeah. And that's what made me uncomfortable with this drop kiosk. Like, you didn't get a receipt or anything. You just left it there, and I was, like, not comfortable with doing that. It was very weird. And... If it's something pricey, I always like to get a weight on the package to prove that you didn't ship like an empty box or something. Because they could claim, like, if it doesn't have the weight on it, the com like the company or whoever you're sending the item to could claim that they're, that you didn't ship them anything. So at least if you have a weight on it, you, you didn't ship them an empty box. Also for, like, I've been selling some stuff on Mercari and everything, and I will video record me packaging just for proof if I ever run it, if the transaction goes sideways, I want to have some proof that I actually sent what I said I sent. Okay. All right, we got a tw we got a Twitch viewer here. Thank you, Chisa2. Yeah, Bash UPS Store. I'm not a fan of them either because of returns. Yeah, I'm just, I do not like what they're doing with that, like, self-service Dropbox thing. I think it's terrible. And I don't like the way that they treat customers, like, who don't, like... It's like, yeah, it's a little extra work. Like, you have to do some work. Like, that's the thing. They like it because they have to do no work. They don't like people coming to the counter because then they have to do some. But I'm like, guys, like, you're paid to do a job. Like, if you don't want to do the job, why are you there? It doesn't make a lot of sense here. I like Grain Line Studios. It's interesting. The paper indie patterns use uh, don't bother my allergies. Comes on th white, thick butcher paper. Yeah, I've noticed that with the indie pattern companies, too. They don't use, like, the tissue paper. They use, like, kind of a thicker, like, print, you know, it's like a Kinko's paper or something like that. All right. Um, is there a YouTube or online resource you recommend for a total a sewing noob? I'm trying to add sewing to my cosplay skill set. I'm currently using um, EVA foam and 3D printer. Okay, so, well, I don't, if you're a total noob on my main channel, this is, like, for sewing news and community stuff. I have a main channel just called the Sewing, called Sewing Report. And I have a lot of very beginner-friendly videos there that are just about, here, I'll bring this up, that are like how to use a sewing machine, how to do very basic stuff. 
Um, so that would be a good, you know, so I do have a lot of, like, if you don't know how to use a sewing machine, there we go. If you literally don't know how to use a sewing machine or, like, how to do stuff, um, here, let me, let me bring this up here. I would definitely recommend you head over to and subscribe to the main sewing report channel. That will definitely help you out here. Here we go. Um, this channel is more like for what's going on in the sewing community and doing live streams. But over on the regular sewing report channel, I have a lot of videos aimed at beginners. Here's sewing be for beginners playlist. Um, and I give like very basic tips. I have a few how to use a sewing machine videos. So here we have a learn to sew in 2024 playlist. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And it's literally like very basic, you know, how to sew curves, how to sew corners, uh, what supplies you need, that kind of how, what all the presser feet do. And I also have some sewing machine, like tips for buying a sewing machine. Um, just to let you know, I don't make machine recommendations because I feel like it's a very personal decision. But I do try to help guide you into figuring out what, like, what machines, like, how to figure out what type of machine would be good for you. So lots of videos. And I also have some very beginner-friendly projects. Um, so this channel is more for, like, us chit-chatting and talking about what's going on. The main sewing report channel is for more of, like, the nuts and bolts of sewing, different projects. I have, I think, over 400 videos. So if you're kind of new... Sewing Report is for like just straight up sewing. And then Sewing Report Live is for like this kind of stuff. Um, if you're trying to get into cosplaying, I would also recommend following um, uh, Cow Butt Crunchies. Let me find this. Let's see here. These are friends of mine. They're very cool. They're more on TikTok and Instagram, but um, Cow Butt Crunchies Cosplay is an amazing cosplay uh, resource. So if you're into cosplay, check out Cowbutt Crunchy's cosplay. Um, but yeah, definitely follow them on like um, TikTok and Instagram. They do a lot more like content there, but they're amazing. Their creations are amazing, and it's um, Regan and Scone, and they're just amazing. At we did a we did a collab to a few years ago, uh, but these. These gals are just incredible at what they do. And they've won like a war. Like they go to co they go to conventions. They're really awesome. And they're very cool people. So I would definitely recommend Cowbutt Crunchy's cosplay if you're into cosplay and you just want to learn how to do like the fancy stuff. I don't do that because I'm not as good as them. But they're really excellent and they're amazingly talented. So I highly recommend uh, Cowbutt Crunchy's cosplay for... Uh, cosplay anything okay oh they yeah yeah no for sure but yeah I I think it's kind of interesting because this is kind of a newer channel so yeah it is kind of I try to pr cross promote each other and link each other but don't worry about it and I see you're coming from twitch so you know I I'm still like you know I'm multi-stream there just because it's easy but um you know I just don't uh you know I'm not I understand that like if you found if you found me through this channel you might not know that I have another channel so but yeah definitely there are a lot of good resources um, I really try to and also just so you know too I don't do paid reviews and I do not accept free products in exchange for like video in exchange for content um, so all of the reviews I have there are 100% and it's you know their items I you know uh, paid for their items that I'm reviewing. I try to be as unbiased as possible. So that's something that's pretty important to me. All right. I've used Silk Dupioni in a bag and it was wonderful. Phrase a lot though. Yes, that does seem to be a thing. I'd watch a sewing with silk tutorial. Maybe I should get some. I want to try to make some of like, if you go on Amazon or whatever and you look at silk pillowcases, they're still pretty expensive there. Like they're not cheap at all. So I would be kind of curious to, try sewing with silk just to see like what it's like because I honestly don't know I don't think I've sewn with silk before at least not from what I remember and yeah I need to put my fabric wholesale direct link back in there I don't know why I took it out but I, for some reason I took it out and yeah I don't know why 
Um, would you stream a so long? I, you know, here's the thing. I've done it on this channel when I first started out. Um, they didn't do very well in terms of like viewership. So I would, uh, but it seems like people more want to see this kind of stream or stream talking about what's going on. The, I've done like eight hour streams doing sewing projects and you know, I would do more, but people just don't seem to be like, they don't seem to be that interested. So it kind of goes, you know, with YouTube, you kind of have to get a balance of like what content you want to do, but also what kind of content people will actually watch. And unfortunately, like those streams just really like, I didn't start to get any traction on the channel until I started doing more uh, news related like content or talking about different topics. All right, I'm getting ready to do slip covers with canvas. Canvas is pretty affordable. I love so canvas is a really good material to sew with. And I actually think it's pretty beginner friendly because it's not that difficult. It's pretty forgiving and it's like stable enough to where, um, you know, it's not going to give you a lot of headaches. I am currently making kiss clasp coin purses. They make good gifts. Oh, that sounds like fun. Uh, Joanne's Northern California doesn't have all the pattern books. Limited actual patterns. Some cabinets are gone. No explanation given. Hope I am wrong. Sad face. Ooh, that's that's pretty rough there. Yeah, I don't know. I should probably go back to my Joanne's and see what's going on. Or maybe try... There's another Joanne's I have not gone to that's near my mom's house that I might try to go to um, as well. All right. Uh, talk custom for cosplay. I've seen his channel. He does seem pretty cool. Um, I didn't know he did, co I've seen him do like some embroidery videos and general sewing videos, but that's cool. Yes, don't you have an interview? Yes, I have an interview uh, over on the main uh, Sewing Report channel with Cowbutt Country's Cosplay. They're amazing and they're so, they're so talented. I just can't even imagine, I can't even imagine getting the results they do. They also do all types of other baking. Like they do resin pouring, they do like 3D printing, they do all kinds of stuff in order to get to make different items um their instagram is so cool too like they're so i can see why they have like such a big following on instagram and tiktok i had a bag i purchased stolen from the post office the person opened the box from the bottom and retaped always get receipts that's that's a good reminder here all right we got a couple rumble comments um all right i'm really liking this channel page cool topics thank you five elements I've tried sewing with satin, sateen, not sure. I've tried with silk because of the cost. Yeah, silk is pretty expensive. It might be good to try sewing with something a little bit lower stakes, like the satin or like, again, I hate polyester, but as a practice fabric, it's at least not super expensive. All right, uh, Calpert Crunchies, that's what I was thinking of. They started with super basic materials. They are so freaking good too. They're amazing. All right, thank you. I make I can make 3D models and tear down and rebuild 3D printers, but I'm totally new to sewing machines. We own a sewing machine, uh, but it has just been gathering dust. Another thing I would tell you is um, look up tutorials for that machine, and you'll probably you'll most likely find some tutorials. Um, so that would be good. Like if I don't have the machine you have, I'm sure somebody else has that machine and has done some content with it. So that would be a good place to get started. If you have a brother. I've done a lot of brother tutorials and a lot of the entry level brothers are similar enough to where you could follow along with those tutorials, even if you have a different model, but I would look up tutorials for whatever machine you have. Yeah, the name is, so the name, they named it after their cats. I think, I think one of their cats is named like cow, but I forgot if it's like two cats, they love cats and I believe they donate to cat rescues as well. So if you're a cat lover, I would you'll you'll definitely love them. All right, Terry says I would never buy a Skitch machine. My friend is so mad about his. He told me about the low class embroidery app. Well, y'all know what my thoughts are on the Skitch. The machine itself, I think, is okay. I just really hate that they made it app and cloud based, and the app is terrible. So, you know, I bought it for the channel, and I'm continuing to use it, but. I don't know. I, I think there are a lot of negatives to the sketch to where I would, I don't know if I would buy it if I didn't have a YouTube channel, but there are certain aspects about it that I do like. I think your sewing machine tips are my favorite. Thank you. I love getting more of my sewing machine. 
Well, thank you. And I love your, is that a hummingbird? I love, I love the hummingbird. That's very cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to get some water real quick here. <clears throat> All right, a good tip from Denise here. If the sewing machine has been sitting for a long time, it might be worth getting it serviced or check YouTube for basic maintenance on that model. That's a good tip, and it depends on if you're, like if your machine is from like the 60s and it's mechanical, you may be able to do more of, you know, look up some simple repairs. Uh, yeah, you could definitely take it to a, a someplace that services machines. I would call ahead and see if they work on that specific, because some of them only do certain brands or whatnot, but maybe call around and see if you can get it serviced. That might help, especially if it's, you know, I don't know how old the machine is or how long it's been sitting around, but that's a good, that's a good point there. Yeah, ask for, pre yeah, if, if you've got like an entry level computerized brother and it's going to cost $200, you're better off just buying a new machine. I hate to say that because I, we don't like creating like e-waste, but that's the truth. If it's going to cost more than the machine is worth to get it serviced, uh, it might not be worth it. Unless you can do the repairs yourself. Um... Yeah, because so, a lot of those, like, computerized machines that are $70, they're not meant to be, like, buy-it-for-life type of machines. They're kind of, like, more, I hate to say it, but they're more disposable sewing machines. And that, it sucks, but that's, that is what it is. All right. And by the way, how does everybody like the 6 p.m. Eastern time uh, start for the show? It's, judging by the viewership, it does seem to be uh, a, a decent time. Like, it's not like there were five people watching. I apologize again, too, for the members only. I was like, there was no comments. That is very weird, but that's my fault. Because I, I had it on members only. So that is, oh boy, what a fail, huh? At least I was able to change it, though, so that's a plus. But I, I'm probably going to sign off pretty soon. But I appreciate everyone who's watching. We've had a great time tonight. Or let's read a few more comments. Uh, my Juki 5550N was $800. That's a pretty good price. I've had it for 13 years. She's a big Juki Industrials are really good machines. If you've got the space for it, they're actually not. Price-wise, they're not, like, ridiculously expensive. And they're good machines. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Members only jacket low. I know, right? Yeah, that was a mistake. I thought I'd, I thought I'd hit subscriber only, but I hit members only by mistake. Well, I hope everyone has a great week ahead. Um, this has been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of great people up in the chat, new people. Oh, we got another comment. I just got my Elegante embroidery machine powered up last week after a long pause. I used the walking foot to quilt an oven mitt using that walking foot made quilting so nice. Walking foots, guys, they're a game changer. Walking foots are great. Yes, okay, everybody seems to like that. Uh, yeah, I think, all right, so I think right now we'll stick to 6 p.m. That seems to be a time that people generally seem to like. And I don't mind going to like 8 p.m. It's, it's almost 8.30. We've been streaming for like two and a half hours. Like, I really don't mind streaming for a while. But this is kind of nice because I'm not ending it like super late. So I can still like clip, I can pull clips from the show. I can do other things. And it's not... You know, it's not like getting ridiculously late. So this seems to be a pretty good time for everybody. So I think we'll keep it at 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. But I appreciate everyone uh, sharing their their input on that. I mean, great break. Okay, yeah. And for some people, like, you're at wildly different times anyway. So it's like, so for you, it's like, if you're in, you're like, what, five or six hours ahead. So it's like midnight there or something. I don't know. It's really early for, really late for you. But this seems to be a pretty good time. Uh, let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching the replay, what other topics would you like to see covered? Or if you have any suggestions for like themes of the show, I try to stick to like a th general theme, but also we can cover other topics or other news that's happening. Of course, we, we can, uh, ch can chit-chat. That's what this is here for. 
But thanks everyone for joining me. And again, once again, I do want to give a quick shout out. Oh my gosh, it's 1.30. Okay, 1.30 in, in GB there. Wow, okay, that's really, really late there. But thank you for hanging in there. And again, I do want to thank our live stream sponsor. Of course, the Sewing Report Etsy shop where you can find fabric, sewing supplies that are all curated by me, guys. This is all stuff I actually use. And I was like, hey, if I'm using it anyways, why don't I do an Etsy shop and stock the same stuff I use? We got some fabric bundles, sewing notions, lots of sew tights. I also have a few handmade items I have personally made myself, if you would like one of those items. Yeah, oh, here's the uh, pin cushion. That's a cool, I love the colors too. So lots of great stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of really cool reviews. You can see reviews. Generally, I haven't had too many... I don't think I've had too many disgruntled... I've had, like, maybe one to two disgruntled customers. But generally, it's been pretty good over there. Um, and believe it or not, I have not had one lost package. I've been doing this for, like, three years. And I've sold over, I think, 1,300... I've made over 1,300 sales. And I've not had one... Believe it or not, I have not had one lost package, which is kind of a miracle. So, shout out to tonight's live stream sponsor, the Sewing Report Etsy Shop, guys. I hope everyone has a wonderful week ahead, and I'll see you guys again next Sunday, same time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be here, and uh, we'll have some more fun. Bring, you know, bring your snacks, bring some coffee, bring a sewing project, sit back, enjoy the chat, and also meet some, meet some new people which is what we do here, and we have a lot of fun. All right, I'll catch you guys next time for Sewing Report Live. I'm Jen. Have a good week, and remember, whatever you're doing, make